run till you get my meals. I'm gunning for the money, money in the bank. Coming with a dank, scrolling the tank, rolling with the gang. You sitting out on the sideline, trip. I go to the hole with the rock like Pippin. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm okay. What up, though? Welcome back to what whatever is live on Wordsports.com. I'm your boy Easy Joe, by my man Spin Morax. Hello. Hello. Where are you? Young Chris in the TD booth. <laughs> JB Smooth on the ones and twos. And I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's classic. It's a Friday, guys. Hit the like button, all right? We got a special guest in the building. Ladies and gentlemen, the legend. Killer. Killer. Flannel. Hey, Spence, you stole my line. I was going to go with the, I'm so sorry. You beat me to it. Where are you? Is that a real song? Yeah, it's a good song. Which one is it? I miss you. It's a very good song, yeah. Which one is it? I miss you. Oh. Yeah. I can't. I don't know it. Sorry. Makes sense. Uh, We all we had an outing last night. We were originally supposed to go karaoke, and then we... Found out the karaoke place was an hour away from our side of town. So, unfortunately, we didn't make it out there. But that's yeah. just, we're kind of like, honestly, in my opinion, being responsible. There's no way you're like, going to, I mean, you're karaoke and you're drinking. Yes. All right? You want the best type of performance. They go hand in hand. Exactly. So, we, we were responsible. We stayed close to home. We went to this place called, uh, actually, no free shot. No outs. free shot. Yeah. No, no free shot. No we went to a local sports bar. And we watched the Thursday night game, and we watched it with Chris. Uh, we had the Pistons game. They did. Which we don't talk to you, by the way. We're going to get in there. You're going to apologize, Flannel Sam. Apologize. You're going to apologize to that man, Killian Hayes. Apologize. But nonetheless, the hottest take of, of my life. Yeah. Uh, Is it really? came out there. It's it's. And you almost got your nickname back last night, for sure. For several reasons. Yeah, for <laughs> several reasons. <laughs> One time I punched the homeless person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me and To be mean, fair, he could have just been very dirty. Yeah. But, <laughs> Yeah, that was something that went down too. Spencer and I talking about like uh, this is like women abusers. Like we're disgusted by them and all that good stuff. And at the end of the conversation, the way Chris interjects is, "One time I punched a homeless person." <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I watch a lot of stand up comedy, so I was trying to do the punchline first yeah. and then explain the story. And when I got to it, it was you know it was on topic, was it not? That's fair. It was. I didn't go over the punchline. Punch the punchline punch yeah. punch is wild. That's the, why I did it. Yeah. The punchline is wild. I just, it also because the way I picture you punching that man in my head was like, <laughs> <laughs> stop! No, come on! You're yeah. not gonna do that to a grown ass man. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how I punch. He was sleeping too. <laughs> he wasn't even up. He was uh, on the bench. <laughs> yeah. He Wake wasn't up. ready. <laughs> he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. ready. All right, so he the re- gave me a bum bum. He flicked my lip. <laughs> The reason Chris yeah. almost got his old nickname back was for this this very take. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you take the floor of it. You said okay. you'll fight this thing tooth and nail to okay. the death. I'm really not a hot take guy. But this is something <laughs> that can. I've grown to accept is a hot take. But I strongly believe it, and I will fight for it to death. We're talking about pizza. And Easy, Easy, and Spencer split a pizza, and Easy's eating it like a child. Spencer's eating it like a grown-up adult. Yeah. This guy Easy's picking it apart and watching pizza. He was picking. He was picking. There was no sauce on the pizza, bro. If I'm just eating cheese and toppings, I'm just eating cheese and toppings. I'm just eating cheese and toppings. I'm just eating cheese and toppings. I can't afford the carbs. Look at me, dog. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, that's a good point. Anyways, what happened is, <laughs> <laughs> what happened is, we're talking about good pizzas, and I said, look, I know this is controversial, and I'll die by it. I hate Little Caesars. I really do like regular Little Caesar pizza is trash. It's garbage. It's a great deal for five bucks, but you're great also deal. paying for five bucks of trash. But the well, one fine. pizza they have is absolutely fire, and I will die by it. They bring it back like once every year, every couple years, is the pretzel pizza. The pretzel <laughs> pizza is just for you that haven't had it. Is like they replace the pizza sauce with like the with like the nacho cheese, so it's like a very cheesy pizza, and then the crust is like is like a soft pretzel with a lot of salt. I'm a salt guy, and I think honestly it's the greatest I'm a salt pizza. Guy. Ever. He says I'm yeah. a salt guy. I'm a I am salt guy. Yeah, Little Caesars, first of all, is bottom tier pizza. It is like we, except for this. Me and my boys That's call them hot and sweaties because yeah. they're, <laughs> they are. Actually. They're like when you're driving home, you're like, yeah, nothing else is open. I guess I'll get a five dollar pizza, right. and then you eat the whole thing and you cry yourself to sleep. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, I the pretzel pizza is not good. It's, yeah. I'm sorry, it, it's it's not. So good. Spencer's had it. Easy hasn't. Easy thought it was gross. And my Sounds one gross. friend, who's a very anti Little Caesars, was and just a very stern like pizza guy. Like he's very opinionated on pizza. 
No, not no. Not that I said my friend. I said my friend. No. Oh, not your best friend. <laughs> oh, idol. I'm sorry. Relax. <laughs> Relax. That's my best friend. <laughs> right. My idol. But, hold, <laughs> up. Getting, hold up. Is that my bestie with the pretzel? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Kanye do not get pretzel pizza together. I just, want to, I just want to put that out there. But no, so he's, he hates Little Caesars. So I'm like, come on, bro. Just try it one time. I'll buy it. If you don't like it, whatever. I'll take the rest home. And so he's like, dude, this is the greatest pizza ever. Dude, no. I, no. I don't know what it is. Like, everybody that's had it, Spencer's the first person, honestly, I can swear to you, blind, that bro. says that they don't like it's it. Everybody that's no, had it has had the same opinion. It's no. not, like, bad, but it's not the greatest pizza of all time. It's yeah. average at best. No. The, the best pizza I personally ever had is Euro pizza from Giorgio's in East Lansing. It's, yes, that they, is they, very There's high. no sauce. They put the tzatziki on it, Euro meat, t- whole tomatoes, and chopped up red onion and it is chronic i could eat like i just it gives me flashbacks like walking home just <laughs> drunk ass. as hell being like, oh Giorgio's still open like, stumbling in there like can i get two pc or a pizza and it's, you know, it, it was right down right across uh grand river from gunson so i'm I, telling you a lot. at the end at the end of the day this pizza i've i truly spencer is i put this on everything spencer's the first person to say they don't love it like everyone, and I haven't talked to a lot of people about this, but I know it is a hot opinion. And I want to talk to a lot of people about that one, everybody one either. What's that? I want to talk to a lot of people about that one either, to be honest. Yeah. I, don't, I would keep that I one uh, close to the chest. I don't care. I was, it is what it is. If I was everybody an avid, it. avid pretzel pizza guy, <laughs> they're, they're <laughs> like, a, like I said, it's not terrible. Day, it, it's, no. it's not super bad, but it's, it's not great. It's not like, Holy. I don't know. I feel like it's like the McRib of pizzas. Like to bring it, it back full circle, though. Yesterday we were talking about cults, and I feel like it the is pretzel pizza yes. is is very much a cult. Like Little Caesars will literally to this day, they will they will tweet about it. It like, is a cult look, following, and you are a member of it. It's the only cult <laughs> idea. Like, <laughs> pull the you, seat. What? Hold on. Would you rather have pretzel crust permanently on the menu? And like the overwhelming no. responses were pretzel pizza, pretzel pizza, and then they responded. But think of how many thin crust pizzas you could buy with a million dollars. Like. This this is truly a cult. It truly is. It is, and it's a cult I don't want to be a part of. I'd rather drink poison Kool Aid than be a pretzel pizza cult. <laughs> I've never. If it comes back out, you have to bring it in. I will. I will. I don't know. Don't don't. I gotta try it. It's, get your own. I don't I'm like. No. I will. In worst case scenario, I'll eat the rest myself. Chris I don't is gonna care. be so I excited. I, Dude, I, I, I don't will. want to deal with Chris on pretzel pizza day. Dude, I will be so. I'll be like. Remember <laughs> Stanley on pretzel day in the office? Yeah. Where he's like. Yeah. He's like. But I like pretzel but day. I like pretzel. That's what I'm saying. Have you ever taken part of the pretzel pizza, the Little Caesars pretzel pizza? I mean, I have. It's it's decent, I suppose, but I wouldn't die on the hill for it or anything. But Spencer's right about Little Caesars. After you eat it, you just feel like absolute garbage, no matter what the pizza is. It's good. It's like it's, the it's like the post nut clarity. You're like, uh, yeah, you know, I probably yeah. shouldn't do that again. <laughs> for sure, we try. <laughs> like you find yourself, you know, what? drunk two a.m. on a Saturday, and you're like, oh, Little Caesars, you're tempting me. <laughs> You go and you do it again. That's it's, facts, though. That's normally how it goes. That's yeah, because like I told myself, I was never gonna try the Coney pizza either. That that one was weird. Like Kelly Rowe was trying to like talk me into it at the at uh, Comerica Park. Yeah, and her and Isaac were telling me about it, and I was like, "There's no, like I'm good." I eat Coney pizza. I just why not just get a Coney though? Like, that's a good point. <laughs> I, like, I didn't think about it. That way. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I just have a Coney at that point. Yeah, I've had taco pizza, taco, boatyard grill, that's Big Mac pizza is good. Big Mac pizza. Mac and cheese pizza is good. Actually, Jets barbecue I've never chicken had pizza. That. Jets nice. barbecue chicken is fire. 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 Yeah. Top tier pizza. But speaking of top tier pizza, shout out to today. You guys have to knock him off. All right. Because he's right now, he is the chat champ. Adam Morrissey so came through in the clutch today. He fed the heavyweight crew. Yes. With Brooklyn pizza. Brooklyn pizza. And I, we don't do free shout outs. But everybody at this network yeah. loves Brooklyn Pizza. That's fair. They have a robot. I still haven't seen the robot. I still haven't seen the robot. I don't know if they have I th- robot. I think, I think it's like a myth. It's like, definitely a myth. Like Sasquatch or, or Norway. Like, it just doesn't exist. <laughs> Norway, Norway doesn't like, exist. It's, Norway it's, doesn't this exist. is something <laughs> that, like, everybody talks. Ryan, I remember going outside. Ryan Lentz, <laughs> Jeff Ifrady, and Mike Gentry were standing out there with their phones out like... <gasps> 
the, the pizza robot's coming. I was like, dude, no, what, are you, what are you talking about? It's like, Brooklyn's got a pizza robot. It drops it off, and I had to go do BDE. So I was like, I'm not sitting out here for a pizza robot. It's but like, I also am like, if there is a pizza robot, I'm going to dive in front of that boy. Get sued. Or, get yeah, sued, get hit. you know, get hit. You are getting good my neck, get hit. My back. My neck and my back, <laughs> you know, and, and then make some, maybe I'll get free Brooklyn forever, but. That's fair. <laughs> They're waiting outside for the pizza robot, yeah. like like kids do Santa. They literally were. They were <laughs> yeah. all standing out there, like, 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 like oh. had their phones out. They're like, "Oh, I can't wait until the pizza robot gets here." I was like, Dude, "Like, what is going oh, on?" Just rolls up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the pizza out. Just drops it on the ground. I expected like to be like a Decepticon. <laughs> 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 Here is your pizza. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It, it would be great if it had an Italian accent. Like, oh, I'm walking in. <laughs> I'm got, I got pizza. I'm, I'm going here. <laughs> what are you talking about? I got the best slice. That's, that's, that's what I would make my pizza robot personally. It would have a giant 100%. mustache on the front of it. That'd be the only robot to get tips. Yeah. If it was Italian pizza robot? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I feel like we're kind of canceled for the we're Italian kinda, yeah, pizza we're kinda, robot. We're kind of entering that hey, territory. Oh. Remember that AI rapper? AI yeah. rapper is... Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's Italians true. aren't soft, though. They can but, handle it. That's fair. Speaking of uh, people getting canceled and being all over the place... Um, oh. Let's go solo. Chris is <laughs> idol. Yeah, go solo. <laughs> Chris is idol and best friend. <laughs> Kanye West <laughs> mentor, if you will. Mentor, yeah, if you will. Hit the Twitter sphere last night. Actually, he was all over the place. This is how crazy Kanye went last night. Antonio Brown was in a, a he police was in a standoff. Yeah, he was in a police, police standoff, <laughs> and that just gone disappeared gone. from the yeah. news. It was a legit story. I think with I, I mean, actually, I don't know. I could have said I anything I wanted on Twitter last night with no repercussions. Anything, yeah. yeah. And. Kanye except for what Kanye bomb. said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Except for what, yeah. except except for what Kanye, Kanye said. Yeah. He uh, was this. Do we have the tweet? Did we? I don't. Yeah, I got. The, I, I got, got suspended. The Chris Paul situation. Yeah. I saw the Not the tweet. I got the tweet about the All Star team. Is that okay. the one you want? Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll roll into it. We'll roll into it. Let me start one. with this one first, though, because he he hit out. He sent a picture of Chris Paul on Twitter. And he's like, uh, before I leave Twitter or whatever the hell he said, you know, I, I just want you guys to know I caught Kim with this guy, and it's a photo of, of uh, Cliff Chris, Paul, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it might have been, been, been Cliff Paul. Paul. That's what Chris told his wife. Maybe that was Cliff. It was Cliff. <laughs> 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 that was a beat. You know Cliff's a guy. Yeah, He's in a commercial. Yeah, come on. Come on. <laughs> no. You know Cliff gets down like that. Yeah, like, you know Cliff gets down like that. So Kanye, was he, was that, by the way, was he bragging or was he like, just I like, don't know. Kanye is what a lunatic. Yeah. The guy's out of his mind. Um, he's obviously not healthy mentally. Yeah. And he's doing a lot and saying a lot of stupid things. But yeah, he was trying to flex that uh, Kim Kardashian and Chris Paul. Do you want the That's exact weird. quote, by the way? Yes. yes. So he wrote, "Let's break one last window before we get out of here." I caught this guy with Kim last. Good night, and it's a picture of Chris Paul. Yeah. Dude, so, also, what was weird about that? What was weird about that is like, what was that? Like a yearbook or something? Like, yeah. where was that picture from? There was like some something. old dude above him. Like, I it was don't know. probably it was like weird. his bowling team or something, or oh, like you know, yeah. biggest, Chris Paul's bowling. It was like team. biggest playoff chokers list. Wow. That was uncalled for. Uh, uh, that yeah, was super that was, that unnecessary. Was kind of super uncalled that was, for. Yeah, he did. <laughs> kind of why, why, why Cliff got to catch all these damn strays? Yeah. But the tweets, uh, the internet was wild Clearly, last night. Kim was the one getting My choked. favorite one was Devin Booker and, and Chris Paul at uh, the Kardashian house. And it was yeah. like Shaq and Kobe. He's yeah, going yeah, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I also saw Dude, the, the uh, Devin Booker and Chris Paul at the Kardashian house. And it was the... LeBron and Kyrie stat line where they yeah. both went for like 49. <laughs> and then there was the, the D way to LeBron alley oop yeah. with yeah. Book and uh, show the, D-book with show, yeah. show the all star lineup Dude, of the Kardashians. I mean, honestly, this is a this, this can beat most teams this in the is world. A cha- Cup. This is a championship is, team. At least a FIBA. This is a championship team. No, this is definitely a championship team. Dude, Chris uh, Paul, James Harden, Ben Speaking Simmons. of team of playoff chokers, I mean, <laughs> that is, yeah. for real. That is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The best playoff performer on that list is Tristan Thompson. That team is Honestly, not getting out the first round. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That's actually a good question now. But the bench mob with, with D. Book, Lamar Odom, and Jordan Clarkson. Fire. Rashad fire McCants. Bench. Don't forget the GOAT. Yeah, Rashad McCants. And How Chris disrespectful Humphreys. to have Devin Booker on the bench, though? Like, How crazy is it that Kim Kardashian married Chris Humphreys? For like, for like three days. Yeah, for yeah. like a week. Yeah. Like, that is actually wild. And then, uh, no, not even going to say it. Say it. Uh, Crackhead? No, no, no. That Kanye was made a bar about Jay Z trading him. Yes. Yeah. Lucky I ain't had Jay dropping from the team. Yeah. Rock Nation. 
He Kanye's a simp for. He's he he's a psychopath. He's a psychopath. And the dude needs needs some some mental health for sure. And if you need some mental health, <laughs> man needs <laughs> all the SMA in the for world. You. That is SMA or the Sports Marketing Agency. The Sports Marketing Agency helps spread awareness about mental health and substance abuse. Their new podcast, This Is the S Word, helps fight the stigma about seeking help trust me everyone i used to work in this field i know stigma is a big reason why people don't come forward and seek help because they feel like they're being judged for their sickness so if you or someone you know is struggling head to thesportsma.com and get the help you deserve i love woodward sports love wearing clothes then you should be wearing woodward sports clothes check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com just click on shop we have all your favorite designs like dan campbell kneecaps beverly hills golf woodward golf and of course our own logoed out merchandise men women infants kids all love woodward sports impress your friends impress your boss impress your dog buy woodward sports merch today Introducing the Planet Fitness Guide to getting that post-workout glow. Step one, what's your why? More epic energy, better sleep, blow off steam? Step two, join Planet Fitness for just $10 a month and get moving in our clean and spacious clubs. Step three, bask in that post-workout glow. Join Planet Fitness today for just $10 a month. Join today at any of the 50 plus Detroit area locations. NBA championships. Detroit fans were there. 11 Stanley Cups. Detroit fans were there. Four World Series wins. Detroit fans were there. And uh, that one Lions playoff win in 1991. Yeah, Detroit fans were there. Woodward Sports, where the fans are. Bowling Warehouse in Hamtramck is the home of the original Warehouse. football bowling pin game called Folding. Folding. Multiple different ways you can play. They've got $12 open $12 unlimited play as well as private lane reservation for $120. If you get thirsty, they got a $2 mystery beer vending machine as well as multiple fully loaded bars for you to choose from. So make sure you go bars. check them out in Hamtramck or visit They're them online at bowlingwarehouse.com. Dot com. Where are you? <laughs> Where are you? What up, though? Welcome back to the World Heavyweights Live on WoodSports.com. I'm your boy, Easy Joined by my man, Spin Morax. What up, though? We got young Chris in the TD booth. JB Spool, the one to two, is an legend killer. Flannel Sam, along with this. If you guys haven't already, please hit the like button, be a friend, tell a friend, and share the stream. I'm turning up for this one. Yeah. All right, because I wasn't here during BDE, and I heard you disrespecting the man again, Flannel Sam. He did. Killian Hayes, back to back threes. In overtime against, I want to call them the Western Conference champions. Unfortunately, they weren't. But a damn good team good with team. A, Lu- a healthy Luka Doncic. Healthy by the way. Luka Doncic. Luka Doncic was playing well, by the way. He is playing very well. MVP caliber. But Killian said, "I tell Killian, bump that." Killian locked him up in the third <gasps> quarter too. Clamped him up in Jesus the third quarter. Christ. Killian locked him up. How many points did he have in the whole game? He Thirty-five. Had, he had eight points in the second half, Sam. 35, 30, 13 to 25, 17, 7 to 14 from three. That's all. That's all. And he had and he had eight points in the second half because Killian yeah. Hayes clamped oh him up. Because because Alex Burks was guarding him. Killian was like, give, yeah. give me the scrub. Come on, old head, get out of here. Give me this dude. And and for the record, Bonjour. just for the record, Bonjour. I am really Bonjour. really glad. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really really happy that Killian Hayes played such a great game. He did play a great game. He's had a good stretch lately. I obviously don't want Troy Weaver's first ever draft pick to be a bust. It's not a bust. I'm not saying he is yet, but he has been so far. No. That being said, the amount of adulation on Killian Hayes' Twitter la- last last night, the amount of just like losing of minds, blowing of wads by Pistons fans over Killian Hayes is mind-boggling to me. It's, Ad- it's adulation, insane. obscurious flattery, excessive admiration, or praise. All right. You would think that this guy hit a game-winning shot to win a playoff series. That's what you would have thought go, going off Twitter yesterday. People were losing their ever-loving minds. May I remind you that Killian Hayes is still averaging 7.9 points, mm-hmm. 2.7 rebounds, 4.6 assists on 37.3% from the floor, which is worse than last year, by the way, and 31.8% from three. So he's graduated from 30-20 to 30-30. And may I remind you, Sam Flannel, Get in Killian Hayes' last... Him. Last 11 games Get as a starter, Get him, he's averaging almost 12 points per game, uh. 6.2 assists, three, one, one and a half steals, and shooting 40% from three. And in his last four, last night, 22, 8, and 4, 
The night before that, 11, 6, and 3 steals. 16, 8, and 3 rebounds. Get and them. 17, 9, and 8. That's very very Daddy. good numbers, very good stretch. Okay. But maybe this is <laughs> let this be a lesson to, to Killian Hayes. Maybe next year. If I and, catch you in the street no, And I really, really hope that he does this because I want the Pistons to do well. Maybe don't have the worst offensive start in NBA history. Because he's been digging trying to dig himself out of a hole pretty much since midway through the season. All I'm saying is it's about the totality of what you do. It's not about a stretch. I want to see it more consistently. And just, I just, I, I don't understand why people have just lost their minds o- over Killian Hayes. People praise Killian Hayes more on Twitter than Boyan Bogdanovich, the actual no. best player on the team, the actual best player of last night, who had 30 on 5 of 6 from 3, who's, who's averaging over 20 a game on 50 and 40 splits. And just remember, guys... Just remember, I know you guys really, really love Killian Hayes. There are two players that the Pistons passed on that year that you could have, but you don't. How about Devin Vassell? He's a damn good player. Who Twenty f- points a game. Are, are you are you really dissing Devin Vassell over Killian Hayes? You can't you can't bring up Devin Vassell if you weren't in twenty twenty. Be like, I think they should take Devin Vassell at seven. Like it's like. Yes, you can. You absolutely can because Devin Vassell is a much better player than, than Killian Hayes. He's averaging twenty a game on like forty six and from the floor and 42 from three and Tyrese Halliburton I know everybody everybody that's knows that's for sure. how that's I feel one. Yeah. about Tyrese Halliburton 19, started ended with that yes, 19 a game Devin Vassell's everybody's good by the way Dev, Tyrese Hall, Halliburton 19.3 a game 47 from the floor 37 from three and over 11 assists I'm just saying that even those guys don't get the love in their markets as much as freaking Killian Hayes gets in Detroit I want to understand what what it is about this guy. So, a.k.a. Sam's player hate not killing him. He said he gets too yeah, much get, love. Get to apologize. Yeah, apology. Apologize. apologize. I'm not apologizing apologize. for shit. Apologize. apologize. Get your field goal percentage over 40%. It's and over 40%. No, it's not over 40%. Since you become the start of the team, it's over 40%. Yes. It's about the totality of what you do for the season, not a stretch easy. Get it over 40% for a season. Get as it over 40 As a starter for the starter. Detroit Pistons, he's shooting 44% and then 40% from three. Would you like your cookie in the form of chocolate chip, oatmeal, raisin, or peanut butter? I'm, he has I want done, a snickerdoodle. Yeah. <laughs> I just want you to apologize. Killian Hayes has been good lately. He's been very, very good in the last four games. I'm just saying that your expectations for him are obviously so low. Yes. The numbers he has put up yeah. in his career says that he is a bust, that he was a bad pick. And I just want people to have that perspective. I got a lot of people saying, like, I told you so. Are you going to apologize? Hell no, I'm not going to apologize. I apologize. want him. I want him to be good. I appreciate what he did. I'm not apologizing. Do it consistently. I will apologize when the time is right, when he does it more consistently. If, if like, him, again, since starting after November 12th when K got hurt, he's been consistent. That's it's been consistent. An Eleven game stretch. Eleven, and like this whole entire team, by the way, has been jumbled up. We've seen the situation with Sadiq's regress, mm-hmm. and we know Sadiq can ball better than that. But it's they haven't been a get, get in any type of like rhythm or funk. I mean, they're all feeling each other out, and half of them are injured. They're back end and injured again. Like it's, it's not an easy situation. It's not. Yeah. Okay, but still, t- Killian, the, Hayes. he's been the one constant since the injury of Kate. The one, Marvin Bagley's been playing really well. Bo- too. Bogey too. The, but Rogi right. falls apart in the fourth quarter, and I really get sick of him handling the ball. Yeah, that's wild to me. What, See, that's what doing? I'm saying. That's what I keep hearing. Why all this Boyan hate? Like, like, do you, do you watch hate. it? Do you it's watch the hate. games? I, I like, do. I understand that. But Boyan Bogdanovich has been the best player on this team this year. I understand in the fourth quarter when he handles the ball. It's not ideal. <laughs> but Killian Hayes has way more faults than Boyan Bogdanovich. You guys should be on your knees thanking this guy. Because if Whoa. he wasn't on this team, this would be a 3-4 win basketball I'm going to be on team. my knees thanking him when we trade right. him for a first-round pick. That's what I'm going to so be on my disrespectful. But Killian Hayes just... Oh, my God. (laughs) Killian Hayes. Oh, my God. And and, and you know what else? I can't wait, and I really don't want this to happen because I don't want to just be like Mr. Proven Right. What's going to happen when he has his patented four-point game where he is like two of nine from the floor and or five from three? It's just going to be excuses, excuses, excuses. Oh, when he missed a few shots, they went away from him. Oh, my God. No, Killian Hayes is what he is right now. I will apologize when he has earned my apology. What what does he have to do to earn your apology? I want to see him get his field goal percentage over 40% for the full season. So what about the before last game, the stretch boy on Bogdanovich had? 13 points, 
one of two from three. 19 points, nine of 21 from the field, one of four from three. Seven of 18 from the field, one of three from three. Eight of 17 from the field, one of five from three. Eight of 12 from the field, two of five from three. Seven of 15 from the field, O of two from three. Like, is, is that not a, a bad stretch of games? Does that not happen? Is that not qualified? That is a bad stretch. But my point is that what Boyan Bogdanovich has done over the totality of a whole of this whole season is have the single best offensive season of his career. But yet, I don't hear people giving him all this all this love. He's still a twenty point per game, fifty from the floor, forty from three kind of kind of guy. And during Killian Hayes' bad stretch, he was the single worst offensive player in the history of basketball. All I'm saying is, put this into perspective a little bit. It's like, no matter what Killian Hayes does, it's just like, why, like, even if it's the smallest thing, which last night was not a small thing, it was a damn good game. And that's why people are freaking out, man, because you, he's had those bad games at the beginning of the year. Now he's getting a chance to start due to injury. And we're, we're, this is what this was. When the, when the injury went down with Cade, I think he actually were in the studio when we had the conversation. Like, what are we expecting from this team now? Like, what are the positives out of the situation? And the development or, like, what we have in Killian Hayes was one of those answers. And now we're seeing, like, okay, he can be at least what we thought he's going to be, which is, like, a bench piece. But I do have a little bit of a beef where I'm – I'm not necessarily going to side with you, but where you may end up looking correct in the situation is that he's doing this in starter minutes. Yeah, and in the month of November so far, well, the month well, of November is over. Yeah, in, over. In the month of November, Boyan Bogdanovich averaged 29.9% from three, 18.9 points a game, and three turnovers a game. That's but, not great, but over the whole year, he's been great. That's my point. It's not about stretches. Stretches are important. To me, it's about the totality of what you do for a season. And Boyan Bogdanovich has been their best player overall. Maybe he has some limitations on defense. No, maybe, sh- maybe. Okay, he does have some limitations on defense, and he shouldn't be handling the ball in crunch time. But the disrespect... Ver- that you guys give to Boyan versus the no praise. No one's disrespecting Boyan. And that, that, that stretch of, of bad games is 14 out of 22 games played so far. But that means his other games were amazing because he's obviously put up great numbers. Killian Hayes has not put up great numbers. He's nowhere near great numbers. He's had to fight his way out of a hole to go from horrifically bad numbers to just normal bad numbers. And he just he, he needs to show me more. I, I am happy with how he played. I hope that he becomes what we all expect him to be. I just don't understand why all the adulation and love for just a stretch. He's been a bad basketball player his career with the Detroit Pistons. He's getting better, yes, but make him actually do something and earn it before you just like Apologize. slobber over yourselves. Real quick, Apologize. before we go to break, I do want to ask this when we come back, and this has been my only concern. That's what I was trying to say before I start really interrupted, Spencer. I, I, my only concern with this whole situation is these are starter minutes. I don't know if he's going to be able to like replicate this off the bench. Yeah. Because he's had two years well, he doesn't now need to. off the bench. He doesn't need to, yeah. He doesn't need to, but like he's playing like well offensively. He's over that 40% clip that Sam was talking about, yeah. right? Off the bench is not the case. We talk about what we dive into football. Too. He played well off the bench last year when they moved into the bench. Let's say, yeah, the yeah. second half. Yeah. First half, not so much. Tell us about Lady Jane's, though. Lady Jane's. You can come to Lady Jane's for an award winning haircut experience and register for a once in a lifetime opportunity to win a down payment on your dream home up to $200,000. Lady Jane's. Open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. No appointment necessary because at Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. It's back. Year three of Woodward Sports Stuff a Studio is here. The past two years, we've collected new unwrapped toys and stuffed our studio so we could hardly fit in it. This year, we're doing it even bigger. Join Woodward Sports and our whole family, December 19th to the 23rd, as we stuff our studio. While you're out shopping or just sitting on your couch ordering presents, make sure you grab one extra and drop it off at our studio, 15 Mile in Woodward in Birmingham. <laughs> we'll be collecting toys around the clock to make sure every child in Mott's Children Hospital feels the warmth of the holiday season. It's the time of year to do for others. Help us stuff our studio. Special thanks to all the wonderful elves at Meyer and Guardian Alarm for keeping the toys safe. Stuff a Studio 2022 with Woodward Sports. The sports marketing agency would not be who we are without great community partners like Higuera Health and Carol Zaniga. It's an awesome opportunity to partner with your organization. Higuera Health is a, a comprehensive behavioral health 
organization. We serve children through older adults with mental health, substance use, and uh, developmental disabilities across Western Wayne counties and really excited to now be in Downriver communities as well. Give us a call at 734-458-4601. You don't have to go to the beach, man. You don't have to get your butt crack full of sand. You just need the little chili peppers, man, to get that glowing beach chili peppers tan. With 26 locations in the Metro Detroit area and more coming, Chili Peppers Tanning is where you'll find the cleanest salons in the D. Join the Pepper Club for the best deals on unlimited tanning. Head to ChiliPeppersTanning.com. You just need a little chili peppers, man. Make sure you download the Woodward Sports app in the App Store and the Google Play Store today. Take Woodward Sports with you wherever you go and listen live on your phone or mobile device. Looking to buy or sell your home? Whether you're a player or a fan, helping you buy, sell, or invest is Michael Phillips' top priority. Being in the game for 23 years makes Mike the number one option for anyone. If you have real estate needs, call Michael Phillips at 313-403-0011. That's 313-403-0011. Michael Phillips, game on. What up, though? Welcome back to the World Everways Live on Sports.com. I'm the boy Easy joined by my man Spin More Rex. Hey. Shout out Joey two times in the Woodward Sports Chat. Pepperoni is the worst topping. Yeah. The worst topping? Yeah. That is a horrible take. That's that's no, it's that's blasphemy. Worse than me. Yeah, it's it's blasphemy. You go ahead, JB. Yes. Yeah. That's blasphemy. It's true. It's not the worst. It is. It's just the it's, most it's, basic. It's it's the most basic because it's the best. No. I wouldn't say best. It's not the best. Shut your whore mouths. Mushrooms are the best. <laughs> Shut your whore mouths. Final Sam. This would be your redemption moment. What's better? Pretzel pizza or Killian Hayes? <laughs> Ooh. Oh, hoo, hoo. Okay, so as of right now, pretzel pizza. If Killian Hayes Why? continues this, oh, you are just a hater. If he continues this, this, this better play up, Who wants I will Sam's apologize. Address? Yeah. I will apologize and give Killian right, Hayes the title you. over pretzel pizza. Apologize. I am. All right, moving on. Well, Kane's out for the season, so Killian's going to get his time. Don't say that yet. Sorry. He's... I feel like he wants to play, but they're holding him back. But all right, guys. We got to talk football. I think he's going to play. Somehow we evaded this conversation all week, which is kind of impressive. But uh, Detroit Lions are going to play the Jacksonville Jaguars this weekend. Uh, we're going to get back to We're going to get to our final predictions of the game. But before we do that, we got to do our favorite segment, Spade. We do. By the By numbers. The numbers. Bear, 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 bear. DJ, spin that ish. Yes. Let me start it off. I got to fire one to go first. All right. I got to fire one to go first. It might be... Uh, Circumstantial, but I like it. I like the odds. Because both times, Trevor Lawrence passed for over 280 passing yards this year. The next week, he was under 170 passing yards. And last week, he went over 300. So, you know, if, if that if that kind of sticks together, Trevor Lawrence might not have that good of a game. That's all I'm saying. Might have worn himself out a little bit last week. Okay. I, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. Probably not. But. Pretzel Sam. <laughs> All right. By the numbers, I've got one 611. So you remember in the offseason when the when the Jacksonville Jaguars signed Christian Kirk to that four-year, $72 million contract? Sure. Everyone was up in arms like it was the worst thing ever. And then the Lions signed DJ Chart to a much better deal, one year, $10 million. This season, Christian Kirk may have validated Jacksonville's faith a little bit. He has 611 more receiving yards this season than DJ Chark. He's been balling. I'm not saying he's worth that kind of money, but he has actually lived up. And DJ Chark has been a complete flop. I mean, we're done with him after this year, but Christian Kirk, 611 more receiving yards than DJ Chark. Who would have thought that? That's pretty crazy. That's fair. I mean, you get paid that much money. That's why I picked him up in fantasy right away. Yeah. Because as soon as he got that deal, I was like, oh, yeah, they got to make that gonna throw worth him it. the ball. Yeah, yeah, he's getting the ball. And honestly, he's lived up to to for most of the part. I straight up Amari Cooper, though, so I wouldn't be mad if he started tanking against the Detroit Lions. JB Smooth, by the numbers. What you got for us? All right, by the numbers, 317. That's how much rushing yards combined the Jags just gave up to the Ravens and the Chiefs. Mm. But the run game is not going to be the only thing to help the Lions this Sunday. It's going to depend on the passing as well, too. They have to stay balanced. DJ Chark, Josh Reynolds, if they can find some open holes in their corners and those safeties, 
This could be a big game for both of them. I like it. I like that. I got one for you guys, too. It's number 16. No, it's not the number of the greatest quarterback to ever play for the Detroit Lions. It is the amount of rushing yards Trevor Lawrence averages throughout this season. And as you guys know, the Detroit Lions have given up 45 yards per game against quarterbacks. If Trevor Lawrence is only rushing to a point of average of 16, we might not have to be that scared about that situation. Although he's still... Can get us. We are literally the worst team against the quarterback. Yeah, that's for sure. That's a good number. By the numbers. By the numbers. My number is 72. Trevor Lawrence has thrown over 72 completion percentage in his past three games. He has been over 72 percent in his past three games. Number that, one of the month of November. That is an impressive clip. I believe he was over 80 in one of those games. The man is playing very good football right now, and that's why I'm starting him in fantasy. For sure. No brainer. If you have Trevor Lawrence on your team, yep. start him. I have Deshaun Watson coming back this week, and I'm playing Trevor Lawrence. By the numbers. By the numbers. I have another one for you guys, and it's the number nine. Nine. Jameson Williams. Jameson Williams. Is it really? No, I oh. see. I mean, I was going to double it as that. Uh, the, D, the Jacksonville Jaguars are the ninth best team against the run in the NFL this year. Mm -hmm. And they played a couple good teams as well on the schedule. It's not like a, a New York Giants situation where they haven't played many teams like over 500. The Jacksonville Jaguars run defense is the real deal. I mean, that's one of the strengths of their rookie number one overall pick, Trayvon Walker. Mm -hmm. He's he's proven to be that. Also, if you want to avoid that number ninth rushing team, you might want to start number nine on Sunday. That's Jameson Williams. Ooh. Flannel Ooh. Sam. By the numbers. All right. By the numbers. I'm going to piggyback off of Spencer with the Trevor Lawrence adulation. Four. In 11 games this season, Trevor Lawrence already has four more touchdown passes than he did all of last season when he played in 17 games. Mm -hmm. This year he has 16. Last year he has 12. I know a lot of people were ready to write Trevor Lawrence off as a bust last season, but he was in one of the worst situations imaginable, that Urban Meyer dumpster fire. He had no weapons. And this year, with Doug Peterson and guys like Zay Jones and Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram being brought in, Trevor Lawrence is a problem. He is showing out. He is showing why he was the number one overall pick, a generational-style prospect. And the Detroit Lions are going to have their hands full. They, they better watch out. Trevor Lawrence is coming. I Trevor Lawrence is. So he's uh, he's playing very well. This yeah, year. if anybody was like washing him out after his rookie year, of the, the dumpster fire that Urban Meyer was, I think you're an absolute fool, man. Yes. For being honest with you, JB Smooth by the numbers. All right, so unfortunately, this is my only other by the number I have for you guys today, but I think it's a good one. Mine is zero. In the past four wins, the Lions have gotten out to that early lead against their opponents, allowing zero points at least for that first quarter, if anything. But if they can stay strong and continue on with this offensive balance attack i think they can push this to another win on sunday especially if the jacks are trying to get the run established for travis ntn you got a shot i, I like, like it that. i like it I like that. my by the number is 106 because in the past three games trevor lawrence has had a qbr of over 106 like we talked about the guy's hot he's playing out of his mind right now his past three games have been the best three game stretch of his career Hopefully the, the Lions can go out there and slow him down a little bit, but he is slanging that thing around the field. Um, Flannel Sam, by the numbers. All right, by the numbers. I've, I'm proud of this one. 2018. 2018 was the season that Clemson won the national championship with a starting backfield of Trevor Lawrence at quarterback and running back Travis Etienne. And this year, they are they are back together with the Jacksonville Jaguars, and they are balling. Travis Etienne is showing. I was having a hell of a year. Mm -hmm. I already told you about Trevor Lawrence. He's having a hell of a year. And it looks like Trevor Travis Etienne will be playing. So that Clemson duo in the backfield is going to – could potentially cause the Detroit Lions defense, which is still by the numbers very, very bad, some fits. That 2018 Clemson reunion in the Jacksonville Jaguars backfield. Look out, Lions. My by the numbers. 21, 21. Detroit 21. Lions have averaged 21 Man. points. I'm sorry, points have averaged 21 points against the Detroit Lions defense since the firing of Aubrey Pleasant and that players only meeting. It seems to have woken up these guys that also are getting quite healthy as we have the injury report. I don't know if we put it in the slack for a graphic if not, but uh, you want it now? Yeah, throw that thing up now. I just want to look, look at this guy. This is the healthiest this team's been all season. They're still missing their guy, Tracy Walker, but Josh Pascal is going to be back and playing. Jerry Jacobs is back and playing. Jeff Okuda is back and playing. The Romeo Quar situation, I can't guarantee you that he's going to be playing, but there was at practice Romeo Quar, Jerry Jacobs, um, Jeff Okuda, I believe it was, CJ Moore, CJ Moore. 
All did 40, 40 down ups, and the team joined up for the last 10. Now, the, the common theme between all his players, they're all coming back off of injury. Mm -hmm. That's just something to keep an eye out for. No, nine. Something the I number is less. Eye, keep an eye out there. The number is, is less. We have less injuries. Good, good job, Chris. Thank you. By the numbers, 362.9. Because although you said the Jaguars have that stingy rush defense, they are still allowing 362.9 yards per, per game. So the Lions will be able to get out there and throw the ball around on them, especially with Josh Reynolds, with DJ Chark back, and possibly James Williams. I'm just saying, I want to see him out there. I, I need it. Please, come on, Lions. Like... <laughs> Do it! Put him out there, please! But if he goes out there, the Lions will be able to move the ball, and they can get so they can get some points. Hopefully, Jared Goff doesn't uh, doesn't turn the ball over. He wasn't on the injury report, so he got a chance. That's true. So you're saying there's a chance? Flannel Sam. All right, I'm pull I'm pulling this one out, but I think it's a good one. Three. Both the deep <laughs> bo <laughs> both the Detroit Lions Free and the intro. Jacksonville Jaguars are three games under 500. So, you know what that means. It doesn't mean a whole lot, but the Lions absolutely have to win this game. You cannot lose a game against a team with just as bad as record of you at home. So, despite throw everything out the window, the Lions got to win this one. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> so I got a you know, chat go. No, notable chat go. I already King has Morris a lot. In the Wolverine Sports Show. Reigning, defending so, chat champ. I'm going Christmas shopping for the heavies this weekend. So far, I have a hat for Spencer, a knife for Sam, Chris <laughs> gets some pretzels, and Easy gets head wax. <laughs> Pretty good gifts, honestly. <laughs> Nothing for JB, though. That's messed yeah, up. He yeah. also <laughs> said, by the numbers, uh, he said, by the numbers, 3.4 miles, the circumference of Easy's bald head. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Damn. What do you say? By the numbers, 3.4 miles, the circumference of your bald head. <laughs> By guy. the numbers! <laughs> but I do have cares. one more before we go to break, and Sam's number was three. My numbers are four more. and five. Oh. Because in the last two games, Trevor Lawrence has been sacked four and five times. Mm. So if the Lions pass rush can get home, they can do some damage in that backfield. Trevor Lawrence, get him on the ground. And that is by the numbers. Easy. Tell what us else? about Moneyball. Moneyball? You could get a hat. Someone place the ball, baby. As a matter of fact, I might have to go by there and, and, and get a hat. All right. Check out Moneyball Sportswear. It's a one-stop shop. Whether you want the latest looking athletic apparel or uniforms for your team, Moneyball has it all. Stop at the Moneyball showroom in Southfield and experience the only way to ball or visit them at MoneyballSportswear.com. Moneyball. It's the only way to ball, baby. Sports love wearing clothes, then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Beverly Hills golf, Woodward golf, and of course, our own logoed out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends, impress your boss, impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. Hi, I'm John from Better A Mortgage, and to me, family is more than blood. That's why I'm the biggest family in Metro Detroit. If you're looking to buy a house or refinance and need a loan, come get treated better than family by me and our entire team here at Better A Mortgage. We pride ourselves on giving you better advice, better service, and a better loan experience. That's why we are Better A. If you're looking for a new mortgage, come get treated like family. Actually, better with Better A Mortgage. Visit us at mybetterate.com or call at 248-480-4467 today. Three NBA championships. Detroit fans were there. 11 Stanley Cups. Detroit fans were there. Four World Series wins. Detroit fans were there. And uh, that one Lions playoff win in 1991. Yeah, Detroit fans were there. <laughs> Woodward Sports, where the fans are. The official meat supplier of the Woodward Sports Network is Spencer Re uh, the Butchery. You can call 248-682-2697. Yes, that's 248-682-COWS. Or move on over and order online at thebutcherysl.com. Shipping included for Woodward Sports customers. The Butchery meets, eats, and treats. 
Sandwiches to die for, Wagyu meats and artisan breads inspired by the legend Chef Dave. Only the best of the best for our meat-loving customers. An old-school butcher shop from a new-school perspective. And again, shout-out to Chef Dave. He just had another child. Hope all is going well for him and the family. You know, the guy can handle his meat. So come get some and order it online at TheButcherySL.com. What up, though? Welcome back to Wilbur Heavyweights Live on a Friday on WilburSports.com. I'm your boy Easy Joe by my man Spin More Rex. We got young Chris Lee, TD Booth, JB Smooth, the ones and twos. We're rocking along. What up, though? On a Friday. <laughs> what? Are you not watching right now? <laughs> Flannel Sam, the legend killer, joining us too. Um, this next topic actually was inspired by Flannel Sam and his comparison, comparing skin luggage. What? <laughs> what is happening right now? <laughs> These people say he's a serial killer. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> I swear you'd be better used to me if I skinned you and made you a lampshade. All right. It's from Always Sunny. This next topic is by <laughs> Flannel Sam. He's moving on a lot. Number one overall pick, Trayvon Walker versus Aiden Hutchinson, which Aiden Hutchinson had some some uh, some smack to talk this week, which is uncharacteristic of him. But I'm excited to see how he performs. But uh, Flannel Sam, what have your expectations been this season for both these gentlemen, and, and how they've panned out for you so far? I mean, I think at this point, if we're being honest, both teams are pretty happy with who they have. I think the Lions are thrilled that they have Aiden Hutchinson. I think he has had one of the best seasons by a defensive rookie. And Trayvon Walker, he's been solid. He hasn't been asked to do as much as Aiden Hutchinson because, you know, on the Jacksonville Jaguars defensive line, they got Josh Allen, they got Dwayne Smoot. They've got guys who, uh, who like, can also rush the Players. pressure. Whereas, like, the Lions... Dude. Yeah. yeah, where were the Lions, Aiden Hutchinson was kind of expected to jump right in and be their best defensive lineman, their best pass rusher, but he has. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is that Aiden Hutchinson has had a better rookie season than Trayvon Walker by the numbers. By he's had numbers. a more impactful season. He's had the more splash plays, and he has made more plays that affect winning than Trayvon Walker. So just imagine in this game, Aiden Hutchinson going up against a Jacksonville Jaguars offensive line that is not nearly as good as the Lions. He has the opportunity this weekend, this Sunday, to make Jacksonville rue the day that they rue ever the passed day. on him and, and pick Trayvon Walker. Because Trayvon Walker, even though he has more help on the defensive line, he's going up against an elite offensive line. He's going up against guys like Pene Sewell or Taylor Decker. And I think Sewell and Decker will manhandle Trayvon Walker. Aiden Hutchinson is the yeah. yes. Aiden Hutchinson is the better player. He's had the better year. Trayvon Walker's been fine, but I think what we've seen so far this season and what we're gonna see in this game is that Jacksonville made the wrong pick. Aiden Hutchinson is better, and he will go out there and ball wow. this Sunday. Yeah. So far this season. They both have two pass breakups. Aiden Hutchinson has the two interceptions. Trayvon only has one. Aiden, Aiden has five and a half sacks. Trayvon has two and a half. Trayvon has more tackles. He's got 37. Aiden's got 31. Aiden's got four tackles for loss. Trayvon's got three. Aiden's got ten quarterback hits. Trayvon only has six. So six. I agree. With, six. I agree with you, Sam Flannel. It is. It was the right pick. It was the obvious pick. I thought. I was totally convinced that Aiden Hutchinson was going number one overall. I thought there was no chance the Lions were getting him. Bless you. What was that? That was the cough, and then the paper fell. Bless you. Thank you. And I, I think I think the Lions made the right decision, obviously. I mean, they didn't have a choice in the matter. But we saw what Aiden Hutchinson came out and said yesterday. Where he said, you know, I, rem I remember. You know, it's going to be in the back of my mind that this is the only team in the NFL that passed up on me. And as a guy in Trevor Lawrence who has been sacked four and five times, <laughs> to, to have an angry, <laughs> an angry Aiden Hutchinson coming after you in this game, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be fun. It's going to be something that he's going to have to be scared of, that he's going to have to be aware of, that this guy is going to be on the field coming after him. He, he's coming for He's coming for him. He's coming on him. He's coming for him. He's Shit. coming everywhere. I, I expect hey, Aiden yo. Hutchinson to have a huge performance. Like we said, this isn't a guy who needs that kind of outside motivation. We've seen that he has had that inner drive. He has had that goal to prove that he is the best player in this draft all year. And this is just that little bit of oomph. That little bit of oomph. That'll, that'll kind of nudge him. For, you know, sometimes you got to yeah. give it the oomph. 
and a little bit to, to nudge him forward and help him, you know, fully maximize his productivity against this Jacksonville Jaguars offensive line that can be suspect at times. 100%. I mean, 86% of the Wilbur Sports chat believes that the Jacksonville Jaguars regret passing up at Aiden Hutchinson. I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I kind of I, I, you know, agree with Sam there a bit. It's like they got what they're happy with. You know, yes. I think uh, Trayvon's still like very good. He's just really raw as like an edge rusher. I mean, he played the three tech back in Georgia. And like, it's just crazy. Like, he went. No one expected that. I mean, I didn't. I thought he was going to be like a bit of a bust. I didn't think he deserved to be in the conversation of the top edge rushers in his class. But you know, lo and behold, here we are. But uh, there's just different players as well too. Like uh, with Trayvon, you can see him. You know, step back into coverage at times because he's such a like elite athlete. Not that Aiden isn't. Trayvon's a little bit more. You know, Trayvon's like the freak of nature type. Um, <laughs> But Trayvon Walker, they use, they utilize him differently. You know I'm saying like these are different defenses, but at the same time, Aiden Hutchinson has been balling for the Detroit Lions. That, that's you cannot deny that. Um, you, you see him last week not show up in the stat sheet in terms of like actual <laughs> numbers and having like <laughs> sacks and tackles. Got him. I'm so happy you got him too. He gets caught up every time. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, though. Um, I think both teams are happy with what they got, to be honest with you. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I can for sure say that Aiden's going to be the better player. I think time will tell at, at the end of the day. But uh, I'm completely distracted from everything that I was saying and every point that I was trying to make. <laughs> yeah. How's it feel? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, you're I, good. You're good. I agree with you. What, I think uh, I what think, you were trying to say. I think you have the point though too. Like, um, you know, the offensive line that Trayvon's going to get because obviously the same thing as the Kayvon situation. Like this is the matchup we're going to be looking at, but the offensive line. That Trayvon Walker's going against <laughs> is Bob in the league, according to ESPN pass block win rate. And yes. I can talk today too, ladies and gentlemen. No, honestly, the offensive line for the Detroit Lions is elite. You got you know Taylor Decker, you got Penne Sewell. Penne Sewell playing this week. I know that he was limited practice because of his ankle and whatnot, but he's going to be there. And Trayvon Walker's going to have a hell of a hell of a challenge up to him. And I think he's still a great run defender. I think he has to develop as an edge rusher, but that was never his that was never his like repertoire. That wasn't what he was known for. Heading into the draft, those things that they want him to become. Your hair's not even blowing. <laughs> what is this? This fan is kicked up, bro. It's nasty. Like, if you can see. Oh! I don't right. think you can see it, no. <laughs> stop, stop, stop! <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Why would you do that? I don't know. It's fine. I'm just glad it's on your side of the room. <laughs> JB, can you, save, can you save this segment? <laughs> I, I don't think I can. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Foyle Sam, can you save this segment? I mean, I can I can certainly try, but it's it, it's sorry, it's the heavyweights. Anything goes here. But like I was saying earlier, I Tra- Over. Trayvon <laughs> <laughs> That is that that is fa- fantastic, Chris. Trayvon Walker The Jacksonville Jaguars, I don't think they're upset with who they picked yet. I think they're happy with Trayvon Walker, but if they get to see Firsthand in person, Aiden Hutchinson maybe have a game where he has a sack mm-hmm. or two and makes impactful plays on the, on the defensive side of the ball because he is going up against a worse offensive line in Jacksonville than Trayvon Walker will be going up against. I think that's kind of that statement moment where Aiden Hutchinson can just kind of be like, "It should have been me." And Jacksonville might, even though they'll never they'll never admit it, they'll have a couple of causes for pauses because you know Trayvon's been all right. Aiden Hutchinson, at least up until this last Bills game, I think he was very much in contention for yeah. defensive rookie of the he year, still, and he still is. He still was yes. very impactful in that Bills game too. Like uh, as a the, the film grinder, as Joey likes to call him, um, he was still like he helped James Houston get that second sack that he got. Like he was still, he flushed Josh Allen out of the pocket plenty of times. Mm-hmm. I think he has, actually helped Bugs get his sack too. They're ultimately being a penalty on that play, but no, Aiden was still effective and impactful. That's the thing when you look at these stats for these players. Like it, when people were like. Kayvon's having a bad year. Why would you even compare him to Aiden Hutchinson this year? No. Like, there's impact outside of that. You had the whole situation go down in Chicago, too, where Aiden Hutchinson kind of forced that interception to yeah. Jeff Okuda on that screenplay. Um, one other point, and actually, I probably can say this segment of this one because it's a little bit of insider information. That, that time I got to meet Aiden and had the, the conversation oh, yeah. with him and his agent. Um, remember that we had that... 32-inch uh, pythons. 32-inch pythons, brother. Remember when... Um, you still owe Mustache that autograph. I told him, come up, he has to come up here and get it. Yeah, that's fair. We did say that. I mean, he works, though. Not every day. Pretty much. Yeah, that's fair. Don't get his ass up here. Nonetheless, <laughs> speaking of Aiden Hutchinson and his agent, um, 
remember we had that, that uh, anonymous pro bowler reach out yes. Corey Woods and he was like you know he has a he has a bull rush which is like we're going to see in like younger pass rushers anyway but uh, his agent this is not this is like words from Aiden his agent was like this is the stupidest shit you guys ever posted and they were quite pissed off about it and like obviously the comments like this past week too Raiden's like yeah I got that in my back of my head only one team passed on you bro yeah. how do you feel undermined but like to grab you know to dig that deep body so, you, I you mean got that it, it makes sense you know the guy had a, one of the best years in one of the best players in college football his senior year. He set the season single season sack record. One of the best. At Michigan. Uh, yeah, he was the a Heisman contender, like rightfully so. He should want to be the number one overall pick. Every every player will say they want to be the number one overall pick, and yeah, it, it takes him. So you're, you're taking this guy out of Georgia who had all that help, Georgia. all of that defense, and he didn't put up nearly the same amount of stats as me. I'll be pissed too. Did he even play in that Georgia I, position? I hope he goes out there, and I hope he, I hope he rips. Uh, Trevor Lawrence set off. I hope so too. Yeah, I'm mean, definitely get to the reasons why for that one. But because Trevor, I mean, actually, I don't have to get, wait to get in the reasons. You kind of explain it by the numbers. Trevor Lawrence on fire. He's playing great ball. He's on fire as of late. He's playing great ball, and you know, Jaguars might need to invest in some defense uh, to you know to protect him. And if they do, all they got to do is go to Guardian Alarm because Guardian Alarm will keep you safe and give you peace of mind whether you're at home or on the road with their 24-7 local monitoring. They make sure the things that are important to you stay safe. All you have to do is call 1-800-STAY-OUT. That's 1-800-STAY-OUT. Right now and tell them Woodward Sports sent you. We are the Woodward Heavyweights. We'll be right back. It's back. Year three of Woodward Sports Stuff A Studio is here. The past two years, we've collected new unwrapped toys and stuffed our studio so we could hardly fit in it. This year, we're doing it even bigger. Join Woodward Sports and our whole family, December 19th to the 23rd, as we stuff our studio. While you're out shopping or just sitting on your couch ordering presents, make sure you grab one extra and drop it off at our studio, 15 Mile in Woodward in Birmingham. <laughs> we'll be collecting toys around the clock to make sure every child in Mott's Children's Hospital feels the warmth of the holiday season. It's the time of year to do for others. Help us stuff our studio. Special thanks to all the wonderful elves at Meyer and Guardian Alarm for keeping the toys safe. Stuff a Studio 2022 with Woodward Sports. Introducing the Planet Fitness Guide to getting that post-workout glow. Step one, what's your why? More epic energy, better sleep, blow off steam? Step two, Join Planet Fitness for just $10 a month and get moving in our clean and spacious clubs. Step three, bask in that post-workout glow. Join Planet Fitness today for just $10 a month. Join today at any of the 50 plus Detroit area locations. It's a great day to get some sense around in your life. Ah, okay, okay, okay. There it is, there it is. Sense around, here we go. Got to grab the cranberry. Oh wait, it's two for four. Got to double up with the classic as well. Centron World, baby. Centron, available at select Kroger's. And if you want to know how, go to at CentronWorld.com. You get dope like me. You know what? Why wait? Ah, great taste, guaranteed. Make sure it's seen and heard. Corner, jumper, and Tweet us. Hop on the YouTube chat. Slide in the DMS at Woodward Sports on all social media. Look at this. Damn. Nobody, nobody wants to look like that. I'll tell you, nobody hey, dude. wants to look like that. Everybody <laughs> wants to look like that. And you can do the same thing. Look at how Ryan Armani transformed his body more stuff your butt. with the help oh of Ryan Armani. Thank you, Carl Weezer. With the help of Custom Health Centers, you too can you go too. from this from this giant twink to this muscle brown freak that you see before you. All you have to do is call them at 844-789-8446. That's 844-789-8446. Call Custom Health Centers today and let them help you get into your ideal form. It, it is crazy because, like, his face really is, like, way thinner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That Dude's down, like, 25 pounds. Good for him. I did catch him. He, he did want one of those cupcakes JB brought, though. Yeah. I was like, Ryan, don't do it. You've been doing so good. Let me eat it. I'll eat it. Yeah. Let me do fair. it. 
What up, though? Welcome back to World Heavyweights Live on WorldSports.com. Hit the like button if you guys haven't already. I'm your guy, Easy, joined by my man, Spin More Rex. We got what up, Chris and TD Booth, JB Spoon with the ones and twos. Pretzel Sam. Are you ready to apologize to Killian yet? Not yet. All right, moving on. Final predictions for the game. All right, he's painting a picture for a win. I'm kind of like set in stone. There you go, Spinny. There you go. What are you? What is that supposed to be? It's my painting. Paint. I know it's a painting, but it looks like shit. <laughs> it's not done yet, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a good. I'm not an artistic person. <laughs> if you if you say art the wrong uh, yeah. way, artistic. Yeah. That's <laughs> what you are. <laughs> I am. I'm not an <laughs> artistic person. I'm not an artistic person, like drawing wise. I, I draw like stick figures. Express myself through vocal art, like spoken have, word poetry. I can like I can draw well, but not like hands. Like when I get to the hands, I'm like, oh god, what do I do? You 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 are actually he actually it's not lying. He he drew a portrait of me and Chris in the back, and they're both pretty good. They are pretty good. And it was just like yeah. messing around with the expo marker. Noah in the back is, is really good. Noah talented. is Noah's super talented. Noah is kid. very he's very talented. Yeah, he's autistic. He's a lot of different talents. <laughs> definitely autistic. <laughs> he is there. for sure. Like artistic, definitely. You know. Uh, yes. He's got he's got that girl voice he does too. Like Ryan, you're huge. <laughs> and, and like let's go. Let's go. Oh, That's a real story. You, baby. <laughs> <laughs> this is, All right, but back to the game. Just, <laughs> welcome to the ADHD hour, folks. <laughs> it, it's, I mean, it's a Friday. It's a Friday. Um, I know what semi was many thinks of how this game's gonna go. I've, I've saw his picture painting. It was flannel Sam. I don't know yours actually. Ooh, my picture painting. <laughs> your, your painting. God, this this is a tough one because obviously this is a must win for the Lions. If they lose this one, their playoff hopes are absolutely over for all intents and purposes, and it's time to start thinking towards next year. But at the same time, this Jacksonville Jaguars team is better than their record indicates. They just have lost a lot of close games, and they've had some situational football errors and some inexplicable kind of like <laughs> eggs that they've laid. But to me, if the Lions want to win this game... I think it's they're going to have to do it with Jared Goff and Amon Ross St. Brown, and maybe if J-Mo plays, but I'm not going to count on it. Because the Jaguars' rush defense is pretty good. They have a good front seven with guys like you know Josh Allen, Trayvon Walker, and like Smoot, and Oluwokan, and Devin Lloyd, who's also a damn good rookie. But their secondary, it can be shredded. They're 25th in pass defense. So if, they're go if the Lions are going to win, I expect Jared Goff to have one of the best games he's had all year. Kind of have a game similar to what he had maybe against Seattle. That, And on defense, the only thing, honestly, that they can do to win this game, in my opinion, is get to Trevor Lawrence. That offensive line is capable of being shredded. And Aiden Hutchinson, I'm, I'm looking for a big game out of him. I'm looking for kind of a statement game, especially with Trayvon Walker, the guy who was picked ahead of you in your house on the other side. Yeah. I'm looking for... Maybe James Houston to build on something. There's going to be no Julian Aquara. That'll hurt. How about John Kaminsky? Get after Trevor Lawrence. Yes. Get after Trevor Lawrence and make plays with, make plays throwing the football. I'm not saying they're not going to be able to run at all because with that offensive line and Jamal Williams, I think you can get almost 3.5 yards per carry in your sleep. What I'm saying is this is this is a tough game. This, this is going to be a game that's going to test the Detroit Lions' medal. Yep. And if you really want to put, put yourself over the top, Jared Goff, I need Jared Goff to ball. I need Amon Ross St. Brown to get open, and I need pressure. I need the fear of God put in Trevor Lawrence because he's still young and can get rattled. Yeah, it's, uh, I agree. It's, this is the Lions going into a matchup that with a team they're very similar to. We talked about it yesterday. They're, they're on similar paths to their rebuild. They have the exact same record this season. They're playing similar ball. They're both getting hot at the right time, and you need the Lions to continue that. You need the Lions to step up and do what they've been doing well over their win streak with that loss to the Buffalo Bills sandwiched in there. You need the Lions to get after the quarterback. You need the Lions to create turnovers on defense while playing discipline at the same time you can't get stupid penalties you can't have unsportsmanlike conducts defensive holdings anything like that cannot happen you need the detroit lions to thanks fletch is this red velvet yeah. Oh, I'm gonna demolish this but <laughs> you're looking at you're looking at a lot of different stuff for the lions to have success in this game 
But I agree, they're going to need to do it through the air against that Jacksonville defense. So, come on, James Williams, come on. Come on. I was gonna ask you how I feel. But no, we need hit the the receivers to step up with Josh Reynolds and DJ Chart coming back. That will be a big help. Amon Ross St. Brown needs to do Amon Ross St. Brown things. And I need to try a piece of this cake because this looks really good. I'm not I'm not a big cake guy, not gonna lie. I always get brownies on my birthday, but red velvet's different. It's cheesecake too, by the way. Oh, I hate cheesecake. <laughs> Ruined it for me. <laughs> Not even gonna lie. I'm sorry, JB. <laughs> you want this? I'll try. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm kind of along. It looks really good. I, I think the, it's what, the Lions are what favored by one point. Slide it. Just slide it. It's all right. Use the fan to blow it over. <laughs> now it's just stuck in the middle. <laughs> stuck in the middle of the cake. Now that is innovation, people. Hell That's yeah. what thank you. Thank you. Hell yeah. Oh um, no! In all honesty, I think that I spoke to like the run defense of the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I was actually incorrect. I was looking that up. I don't think they are top ten. I apologize for that one, guys. Damn. But nonetheless, Trevor Walker is. A, I should never said that. I should just you know kept going. But anyway, Trevor Walker is. Yeah. Uh, he's a late run defender. He really is. But I'm not really tripping over that. Like say what you want. I guess I guess in the comparisons of him versus Aiden Hutchinson. I mean that's one thing that he's for sure good at. Regardless of the end of the day, is defending the run. Um, however, we do have the return of Penae Sewell. We do have Taylor Decker. We do have the return of Jonah Jackson now, too, from his concussion or illness, whatever the situation was. Um, that puts then Dan Skipper as the guard. So I'm not – I think we're definitely going to run the football on these guys. I think we're going to run the football well. Uh, I guess I am a little bit concerned with their defense, though. I mean, they've been just as shitty as the Detroit Lions as of late. So, like, they have – they've had these early draft picks where they're drafting these freaks of nature. They have the Devin Lloyds out there, the Trayvon Walker out there. They have a, a Josh Allen out there. I don't think Josh Allen's elite as an edge rusher, but I still think he's good. You know, he's still very respectable. But at the end of the day, the Detroit Lions offense has been the most consistent part of this team, quite clearly. Even with Jared Goff at the helm. And, and I think they could win this game 110% because of that. I mean, the one danger is, is if, I guess, Goff does get a little bit risky because there's plenty of athletes on that side of the field to make plays. But I don't think that'll be the case. I think the Detroit Lions will be able to shove the ball down their throats just as they plan and intend to. And on top of that, I think our defense. I mean, the only way I can see the Detroit Lions, like, losing this game is it the confidence of Trevor Lawrence from the fourth quarter of last week? We mm -hmm. had 173 passing yards in one single quarter against the Baltimore Ravens. It has a respectable defense, by the way. As if he carries that confidence in this game. And you know, one of the greatest quarterbacks ever, Jared Goff, <coughs> he said that. You know, I, I troll when I say that one. But no, Jared Goff, they asked Jared Goff about this in the, uh, the interview did this week. Because the Trevor Lawrence, the number one overall pick, Jared Goff, a former number one overall pick. And they asked Jared, you know, how long did it take you to get comfortable in the league? And he said, probably around like my 24th start is when I got things going. Well, Trevor Lawrence is now entering his 26th start, if I'm not mistaken. It could be 29th. I could be wrong on that one. I apologize. But nonetheless, he's quite clearly coming to a groove in this past November. You know, yeah. hit, hitting that stride. And just as Flannel Sam said, we got to crush that confidence. We got to break this kid yeah. in that confidence. And that guy, Aiden Hudson, he talked the talk. Now we got to see him walk the walk. And let's be real about it. He's been walking the walk since, he's, you know, yep. since last year in Michigan. But once you talk the talk, it, put, it puts a little something different in there. I mean, that's why I like, I told you, my two favorite players, Richard Sherman. The past two years, we've collected new unwrapped toys and stuffed our studios a week and hardly fit in it. This year, we're doing it even bigger. Join Woodward Sports and our whole family, December 19th to the 23rd, as we stuff our studio. While you're out shopping or just sitting on your couch ordering presents, make sure you grab one extra and drop it off at our studio, 15 Mile in Woodward in Birmingham. <laughs> we'll be collecting toys around the clock to make sure every child in Mott's Children's Hospital feels the warmth of the holiday season. It's the time of year to do for others. Help us stuff our studio. Special thanks to all the wonderful elves at Meyer and Guardian Alarm for keeping the toys safe. Stuff a studio 2022 with Woodward Sports. Fellas, let's be honest. We like things to be easy. We like simple stuff, like sports seven days a week. We like things uncomplicated, like Lady Jane's haircuts for men. Open 10 to 8, seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Sign in, sit down, watch your favorite team play. And before you know it, your hair will be game ready. Open 10 to 8, seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's haircuts for men. It's wicked awesome. It's a winter wonderland if you can shop, eat, and play. 
lucky for you, you can do it all at the downtown Detroit market, Cadillac Lodge, and the new winter version of the Monroe Street Midway, all located just across the street from Campus Marshes Park. Find the fun at deckedoutdetroit.com. Make sure you download the Woodward Sports app in the App Store and the Google Play Store today. Take Woodward Sports with you wherever you go and listen live on your phone or mobile device. Chili and Peppers Tannies is where you'll find the cleanest salons in the D. Spotless sanitized rooms with trained and certified tanning professionals. Join the Pepper Club for all the best deals. It'll be all competitors. About $5. $5. $5, y'all. Listen, while you're singing, don't forget to pick up Australian Gold, Designer Skin, Caltan, and Swedish Beauty Lotion. ChiliPeppersTanning.com. The hottest balls, the hottest deals, the darkest tans, your vitamin D headquarters, 27 locations, and more. Coming pop, pop, back pop, to the guys in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> what up, the fuck? Welcome back to Mordo. It's live on sports.com. I'm your boy, Easy Joe, but my man, Memo Rex. <laughs> what up, Yeah, I had some of the microphone in the yeah, earpiece again. That was weird. weird. I don't know what that was during some the reading, Chris. I apologize. Back and forth, yeah. Uh, yeah. Pretzel pizza just messes yeah, up the I signal. Know. I don't I, th- I think it ruined the static. No. Final no. Sam, the man's chair, JB's move. I'm the one to choose. Um, Pretzel, so it yeah, sounds like we're all taking the we're all taking the lions. Sounds like it. JB, you didn't get to speak on that segment. Where you at with this thing? Oh, I'm taking the lions 100. percent If there's one thing I believe in, it's that revenge game narrative, and you got two of them set up for DJ Chark and Aiden Hutchinson. So they're gonna come after them today. Uh, that's yeah. Like clearly, it's been motivated all season. Um, just like revisiting that conversation in my head that I had with like he and his agent, and and again that was his agent talking, doing all the shit talk. Uh, shout out Ryan and those guys, but uh, he's playing really well this season. Yeah, you know he's had his moments. He's definitely looking better as the season's progressed, and I mean, that's something you expect. And I, I actually AG was in the press conference the other day. He's defending the Glenn. Everything that I've been telling you guys all season, like you see these younger guys progress as like players in the NFL mm-hmm. as the season goes along, and you're starting to see that come along with some wins. Now on top of that, I'm getting a little bit healthy. Let's sprinkle a little bit of health on there. Breaking a little bit of health on there. Speaking of health, the Jamison Williams is one of those pieces coming back soon. I don't know if it's going to be this Sunday. But speaking of the health conversation with Jamison Williams, during the BDE chat, uh, a lot of the guys were in there wondering if he was too small for this league. They were kind of concerned about seeing the size of his legs and stuff like that. Yeah. And you put on on the prep sheet, are you concerned about the size of Jamison Williams? (laughs) I don't know what what kind of size we're talking about here, but... I think Jameson Williams will be fine. I do think, obviously, he needs to put on some muscle, put on some weight, but that will come with being in the NFL, going through a training camp, getting a dietitian, doing things like that. It'll help him put on weight, put on muscle. But you look around the league, and there there are receivers that are similar sizes to him. A CeeDee Lamb is a similar size to him. Obviously, Devontae Smith is smaller than him. Like the, it's yeah. not it's not the worst thing in the league. Wide receivers don't get hit like that anymore. Like they're the, they're not getting cracked. They have the defenseless receiver rules. They have different things. So I'm not worried about JMO's size per se. I think you know getting there with Amon Ross St. Brown for a whole training camp and and and, and pops. You know, John, Brown. And John Brown, John Brown will whoop JMO right into shape. So I, I, I don't, I, I, I don't have anything bad to say about that. I think he'll obviously pack on some pounds as he gets a full NFL training camp in next year. He'll, he'll increase his muscle mass and he'll start getting a little bigger. So I'm not worried about it. No, I'm not like tripping either. What about you, Sam? No, not not even a little bit. I mean, like like Spencer said, he brought up a name, Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith is a certified string bean, basically, and he's doing just fine. He can withstand the pounding of, of the NFL. And I've often compared Jamison, Woy- Jamison Williams' potential to a better version of Deshaun Jackson, a more well-rounded Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson was, for an NFL football player, a, a, a little guy, but he was just so stupid fast that nobody could catch him that's the thing if you're Jamison Williams like Spencer said he's gonna add he's gonna put on more weight he's gonna have like it's an NFL dietitians an NFL workout routine but maybe the fact that he isn't so big can be an advantage for him I think if he puts on too much weight he could lose some of that speed 
And all, and I think we all agree the one thing that we want most in Jamison Williams, the thing that is his greatest attribute, is his world class speed. Is his speed that you don't see every year. The type of speed that makes not fa- like fast people look not so fast. Yeah. That's yeah. what Jamison all Williams. Right, you pyro, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's what Jamison Williams has. So to me, the size, it has, it doesn't really bother me at all. If anything. The fact that he's 6'1 is a positive. Yes. I don't care that he has a smaller frame. The fact that he's 6'1, that to me is the part of his size that kind of makes me happy. That's the thing that I think doesn't get talked about enough because he can go over the middle. He can maybe go up and high point a ball. I'm not saying it's his strength, but he can do it. He's not one of those 5'9, five, 5'10 five, receivers. This is a real receiver who, ha- I mean, a real sort of like number one style receiver who is as fast as lightning, one of the fastest players in the league. So, no, his size doesn't concern me. Justin, Justin Slanik would say he's blazing. He's absolutely blazing. Yeah. I mean, he, he makes like Khalil Pimpleton look not blazing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's a good point. Shots fired. Uh, 100% with you guys. The, uh, Sam, you brought up the perfect comparison for me is Deshaun, Watt, Deshaun Jackson, who just caught a 50 yard bomb last week yep. against this Jacksonville Jaguars team in itself. So, like, no, dude, this side is fine. And he's way bigger than, than Deshaun Jackson. I think Deshaun Jackson is like 5'8, 5'9. Yeah. I, I don't think he's that short. But yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know, you know off the top of my head, but uh, Jamison Williams it does have that six foot frame. I look at back uh, Jerry Rice, a uh, similar build in my opinion, too. I think he only weighed 200 pounds in his playing weight. And Jamo is also just. Deshaun's 5'10. 510? Yeah. Jamal also just turned 21. Like, I, I guarantee you're going to put some weight on him as well. You know what I'm saying? And um, there's another player, I think his former teammate at one point, actually, Garrett Wilson, who yeah. shouted him out today. He did. We actually, do we have that tweet? The Garrett Wilson tweet? I mean, we'll get to it after this, but uh, Garrett Wilson, you similar to size, up? too. Yeah, throw it up. Garrett Wilson is a smaller guy. He's so not is Chris Olave. Chris not, Olave, you know, yeah, yeah. Chris Olave is only 190 pounds, too. And Chris Olave got cracked last week. Yeah, he did. Got back up and kept playing. JMO replied, too. Yeah. As Garrett I'm Wilson, obviously, they, saying, you know, they're teammates at Ohio State. He said, bro, I can't wait to watch my dog JMO play. Pretty much like the rest of us. And JMO said, Super SG coming soon, brother. It's this dude. What is SG for? I don't know. Super s- Slime Gang. Slime gang could Maybe. be could be slime gang. He didn't say bull. He bull. That's my favorite tweet. I made a poll earlier in BDE. I said, uh, yeah, one of the options was bull. <laughs> I got like twenty two percent of the vote. That's what I'm talking about. Cooling a bull, with my bros. Um, that tweet though got me thinking JMO might play. Bull. Yeah, me too, man. That bull tweet really got me thinking JMO might play. It got me excited. Because, you know, when you're bulling, you're bulling. You know, you're not cooling. You're not fooling. You're bulling. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got one other question, too, for the second Good part breakdown. of that. Thank you. Um, yesterday, our guy Abe was in the chat. Hey, Abe, a, a Jets fan who has a Garrett Wilson on his team is just the same size. Hey, 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 hey. The, that's, what, that's what Abe does. Yeah, because he brought up uh, you know other speedy guys in the past. Henry Ruggs was the name he brought up, Sam. Is there any concern of like those type of scenarios or situations? Henry James Ruggs was about to say a good Henry player, Ruggs yeah. is a is a terrible comparison because Henry Ruggs is sort of like lack of durability is the least of his problems, yeah. obvi- obviously. <laughs> and, and I right, and I've seen comparisons to like Will Fuller. That's one that I've often seen a guy who has been a good player in this league. He's very fast. He's he but just does a bunch of PEDs. Yes, but he's also like he can't stay on the field. Mm-hmm. I just. I don't understand sort of the fixation with J-Mo's sort of, I wouldn't say, lack of durability. I mean, that that ACL injury he suffered had nothing to do with that. It was just kind of a a fluke sort of thing. So, to (laughs) me, Jamison Williams will be fine. And that tweet by Garrett Wilson, that that was pretty fire. Game recognized game. Garrett Wilson is a player in this league. He's a dog. And he knows that Jamison Williams, he would never admit this, he, he might think like, Dude, I'm good. You should you should see my guy, Jamison Williams. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, I, that's to me what that sort of signifies. Facts. And we have Justin Slanik in the Wilbert Sports Chat saying Jamo might be fast, but he's got nothing on Pimpleton. Pimp. Keep Pimpleton's name out of your mouth. <laughs> so yeah, that's the original Blazer. Jamo's hands. I I only watched him in the big games at Alabama. Uh, actually, he was like the one receiver performing against that Georgia game until he went out. He was balling. So I'm like, I'm just gonna drop that question. They would have won the game if Jamo didn't yeah. get hurt. Yeah, I don't think there's any. They question couldn't stop him. They couldn't stop him. He was he was playing out of his mind. Yeah, it's not just the speed; it's the body control. It's the ability to find a seam in the defense. Yeah, and it's the ability to receive the ball, which is number one priority when you are a wide receiver in the NFL. Is is this crazy? question to ask and I'm not I'm not trying to like take the other side of the situation but uh put JMO in that scenario with DJ Chark last week. D 
do you think he's able to make that turnaround catch in time? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's tough for any receiver to make that catch. Yeah, that was a pretty awful throw. throw. five yards behind you. What do you think, Sam? Yeah, I'm going to go with Spencer on that one. That was just a complete and utter miscommunication or a bad throw, whatever you want to call it. Bad you would have to contort your body at, at like right when he threw it at a certain time. I don't think a receiver in the history of the NFL could have adjusted woo-hoo. to that. I like it, Sam. I do. I mean, right? Why'd you, why'd you get a woohoo? What was that? Because he's throwing golf under the bus. So I like it. Oh. You know, <laughs> and I'm all for it. But like something else I'm all for it. is the meat. And where you can get your meat is the butchery because the butchery the butcher is the official meat supplier of the Woodward Sports Network. You can call 248-682-2697. Yes, 248-682-COWS. Or move on over and order online at thebutcherysl.com. Shipping included for Woodward Sports customers. Only the best of the best for our meat-loving customers. The butchery. Meats, eats, and treats. Sandwiches to die for. Wagyu meats and artisan breads inspired by the legend chef Dave. So come on. The guy just had a baby. Go taste his meat. And you can order it wow. online at thebutcherysl.com. Wow. It's back. Year three of Woodward Sports Stuff A Studio is here. The past two years, we've collected new unwrapped toys and stuffed our studio so we could hardly fit in it. This year, we're doing it even bigger. Join Woodward Sports and our whole family December 19th to the 23rd as we stuff our studio. While you're out shopping or just sitting on your couch ordering presents, make sure you grab one extra and drop it off at our studio, 15 Mile in Woodward in Birmingham. (laughs) We'll be collecting toys around the clock to make sure every child in Mott's Children Hospital feels the warmth of the holiday season. It's the time of year to do for others. Help us stuff our studio. Special thanks to all the wonderful elves at Meyer and Guardian Alarm for keeping the toys safe. Stuff a Studio 2022 with Woodward Sports. Life is full of hard choices. We're here to make one of life's biggest decisions as simple as possible. My name is Christina Gennari, and for over 20 years, I've helped hundreds of families buy and sell homes. We cover all of Metro Detroit and more, from large luxury homes to starter homes. We will work hard to make sure that you get the home of your dreams. So if you're in the market today or even thinking about buying or selling in the future, make the obvious choice. Christina Gennari, the obvious choice in real estate. Visit us at soldchristina.com today. Three NBA championships. Detroit fans were there. Eleven Stanley Cups. Detroit fans were there. Four World Series wins. Detroit fans were there. And uh, that one Lions playoff win in 1991. Yeah, Detroit fans were there. Woodward Sports, where the fans are. Time to talk about Swiss. See us. Not the Jaguars' defense this Sunday. Swiss Insurance Group. Swiss Insurance Group and their employees are heavily involved in their community. It's very rewarding, but it comes with great responsibility, like Spider-Man powers. If you send a local youth sports board, homer association, or volunteer coach, directors and officers of insurance is a must, like the arm of Spencer's pit. Make sure the kids, parents, and volunteers are all protected and call Swiss Insurance today. 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 Check it out. Must. Rip. Call them today. Rip. Where are you? What up, though? <laughs> Welcome back to What Word Heavyweights. Live on WordSports.com. Every day, Monday to Friday from 5 to 7. I'm your boy, Easy Joe, by my man, Spin More Rex. What up, though? We got young Chris in the TV. Check it JB out. JB Smooth, the ones and twos, and Flannel Sam Rip. in the match. Rip. Detroit Lions getting healthy just on time. The numbers Detroit Lions, young defense progressing just on time. Is it just in time for a playoff run? Spin more rats. Mm, no. Playoffs? No. no. Uh, playoffs? No, I'm not going to go that far. I'm not going to say they're going to make the playoffs. They still have, uh, there are a lot of teams they would have to leapfrog. And some of those teams do play each other, so that, that could help the Lions. But it's still, they're going to have to jump, what, four teams to get to that spot? And if they win out, yeah, they can make the playoffs. But I, I'm, I'm not ready to just dive on that train just yet. Although this is a very... Uh, a good season so far. It would be much better if they win a couple more games, but mm-hmm. I, I'm not ready to say playoffs just yet. I don't know if this is like just for this. I have no clue. My brain right now is clicking and wanting to say 
Your brain's been acting real weird lately. Though, that was so yesterday. I don't know if I trust it. Today's new day, but my brain's clicking and wins. I don't. I don't even want to say. I kind of want to say yeah. Mm. Just because I was just thinking, like during the question I asked you guys, if that was Jamison Williams in the DJ Chark situation, would you think he would have been able to like turn around and make that catch? Which my answer to that question would have been no. Yeah. But still, imagining in that conversation, Jamison Williams that DJ Chark route, he's more than those two steps ahead as a defender. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like not just him, but Amara St. Brown, we saw was open on that play. Shane Zilcher, we saw was open on that play. DJ Chark himself was open on that play. Ben Johnson. Getting a Jamison Williams to an already deadly offense, I, it, and the defense is like night and day better. Guys. Yeah. like it, it oh, yeah. really truly is. They're playing a lot better. It's insanely better. People are coming. The defense is getting healthy too. Like you said, they're going to have hopefully Josh Pascal, Pascal yeah. Jerry Jacobs, and Jeff Okuda are Romeo's all back. Soon. Hopefully Romeo can be back. James Houston, the uprising. You know, shout out James Houston. Shout hopefully out. he can, he can perform at the same level he did. In more than just five snaps, I, I think he deserves more than just five snaps. So, yeah, they're getting healthy. They're going to be playing better ball for sure. But they're in they're in a hole. They're in a hole, and yeah. I don't know if they can dig themselves out of this hole. There's a good question. I mean, that's a good point too. I'll, I'll note to this, and I, this maybe not even count for anything because it happened like during the actual regular season. But there, I give Jared Goff some props. He was a part of a losing situation, and you know, with the Rams before McVay took over. So he's used to like digging himself out of holes. You'd become like a you know winning at that point. I, I mean, for the main thing for me, obviously the Jameson Williams conversation was sparked it in my head just now too. But the defense is just night and day different. I think Josh Pascal, you saw his impact on the game. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson, his impact on the game is there whether he's on the stat sheet or not. If James Houston is what he like was in those five plays, which that is unfair to expect out of anybody, but we at least know he can contribute to helping win football games. Mm-hmm. We know that Romeo Aquara, when healthy, can contribute to winning football games or at least make game-winning plays. Yes. It's something I, I'm just, my, my thoughts are flirting with at the moment. I don't know, Sam. What, what about you? I don't think it's silly to still talk about the playoffs. I said before the Buffalo game that if the Lions lost that game, it would be harder, but their pathway is not done. What we could be looking at with this Lions team is the is – among the healthiest we've seen them all season. You got guys like Romeo Aquara who are trending to come back. Jamison Williams, the Ferrari that we're all so excited about, trending to come back. Jerry Jacobs is, is is back playing. I mean, you've got all of you got a team that looks to be more healthy. Guys like even even DeAndre Swift, maybe he maybe the corpse of DeAndre Swift can finally come back to life down the stretch. Hey, he looked good in that Bills game. I, I was I was ready to talk to <laughs> most shit to you guys. Did he? Yes, he looked did good he? in that Bills game. Yes, he did. Oh, my You're God. You're saying he didn't? I'm saying that he was basically a non-factor. You are out of your mind in the Bills how, game. How am I out of my mind? You are out of your mind. He was that one touchdown. Uh, by the way, it was a touchdown. I actually had the conversation Say it with in, your in private with Spinney. Say it with your I was chest. Like, I, I don't feel like any other team would have had that <laughs> touchdown reviewed. The, the touchdown that Marvin Jones had last week didn't get his, both of his feet in, but they still counted for the game winner. John J. Chest. Swift was definitely impactful in that game. I mean, he, his knee was down. It, not sure. everything is no, Detroit no, versus no. everybody. No I, no, I didn't say his knee wasn't down. I was talking about just the, the play being reviewed. But that touchdown, well, eventually, obviously, was called back. A hell of a play made by DeAndre Swift. It and was. he had a multiple. He had another play like that, too. Say it, it, with your it, it was, but, I mean, I just, DeAndre Swift was not supposed to be a diet Theo Riddick. That's, 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 all, that's all I'm saying. And he, but he is potentially with 10 days off getting healthier it's this is a team that is getting healthy at the right time john kaminsky he's missed some games i already mentioned jerry jacobs and then kirby joseph at the beginning of the year was a non-factor and now he's turning into a player a guy that we expect to be the free safety of the future guys like Derek barnes at the beginning of the year we wrote him off and yeah. now he's playing well this is <laughs> the healthiest most developed they have been at any point of the year and they also have a favorable schedule go- going down the stretch if they can go five and one and and end the season nine and eight i think that's the best you, you can hope for and then we'll just see where the standings play out they obviously have to get there first but there is a pathway to this team making the playoffs or at least putting themselves in a damn good position too do you feel it's more likely now with jmo coming back or I guess I can't even see coming back because he hasn't been here yet, but arriving. Oh, dude, if, if, if J-Mo's there, I mean, it could open up all kinds of, of possibilities. Obviously, he would be the most explosive offensive player on the team from day one. And we've talked about it on BDE. 
Imagine just what his presence can do for other Detroit Lions players. We all agree that Amon Ross St. Brown is a star. He is one of the best possession, kind of short to intermediate route receivers in all of the NFL. He's one of the best receivers in all of the NFL. But just imagine him with more space to operate in the middle. Teams have to key in on Amon Ross St. Brown, and he's still killing them for... I would say for a large portion of that game, maybe the whole game, when the Lions offense was on the field and the Bills defense was on the field, the best player on the field was Amon Ross St. Brown. And you could add a guy like Jamison Williams to compliment him, to be sort of the guy that stretches the field, give defense, like, make the defense be more honest, and Amon Ross St. Brown with more space over the middle. Yes. If Jamison Williams comes back and makes an impact, I will flat out call for the Detroit Lions to make the playoffs. I think that's like the duo, too. Like I know that you want another like weapon at, a, at the wide receiver position, but I don't I don't think we need it. Like, you have to – we have a Jamison Williams in the field. You have to have a safety like over them. Mm-hmm. You, I mean, you have to. He's going to break you, if not. Do you have to? I do just said that, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I'm Russ, and I'm Ross St. Brown too. Like when he gets the ball, dude's just breaking tackles. Like he's like a. I don't want to compare him to Gold Tate because they're, they're different players. I mean, Hines Ward is the one comparison I would make as like a pro, but it, it, he's I'm a Ross St. Brown. How about that? I'll, I'll give him his own like due diligence. He's deserved that at this point, and it's only his second year, which is damn impressive. But he he makes plays. He's every single time he just seems to do it. I, do you think teams have been keen in on him like lately? Like. I think they, they have been paying more attention to him because with the lack of deep threats. Ooh, the lack of deep threats. With <laughs> Don't even call it. Zillion motions. <laughs> with the lack of deep threats, not having Josh Reynolds, not having DJ Autistic. Chark for a lot of the games, he was it, he was being keyed on. You know, when you're lining up Sam's boy, Tom uh, Kennedy, Kennedy don't key on me. And, and, <laughs> and whoever else the Lions were lining up at wide receiver, it's a lot easier to key on a guy like Amon Ross St. Brown. So, yeah, I, I think they were paying more attention to him. But now getting Josh Reynolds back, getting DJ Chark back, hopefully getting Jameson Williams soon, you can't do that as much. You're not going to be able to invest as much thought and time into stopping a slot receiver. So, What do you guys think it is with uh, Amon Ross St. Brown? Because I know, like, when I took the deep dive into what the situation was with Cooper Cup, because we're keeping it a buck, the situation with both these guys are not like elite athletes in terms of like speed and like you know shiftiness. Well, I mean, I don't, Amaral gets a little sh- little shifty out Amaral's there. Amaral's pretty shifty. I found out last year with Cooper Cup, I guess a lot of situations with him, there were option routes. Uh, Wes Welker like operated like that too. Like he would see a certain type of coverage and he'd have like multiple routes he could then run from that. Uh, I can't assume that's the same situation Amaral St. Brown. At least I haven't heard that. At least like what do you? How do you? No, I don't, think, I don't think he's on that level yet to where he's optioning off his own routes. Like, yeah. like you said, like Cooper Cup doing that, that is different. Yeah. That is a different. Obviously, I think he has some option routes in there where he's playing the the safety or he's playing different reads to say, should I keep it low? Should yeah. I go over top? So what is it? Like, but how also, the I don't think Jared Goff is like, analytical enough to be like, okay, I yeah, he's going to do this. And so I'll have to throw it there. Like, I, I don't want him to think. I want him to. Jared Goff's thought process to be like, he's going to be here, so I throw ball there. <laughs> like that, 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 that is what the thought process needs to be. But I think it's just, like you said, man, he, he, he's a bulldog down there. He gets open. He, does, he runs routes terrifically. He makes plays, and he gets open. He gets separation because he might not be the, the biggest burner, but he's quick. He's got yeah. that quick twitch moving in and out of cuts, moving out of the top of the route and breaking things off to give him the separation he needs. And when he gets the separation, he does not drop the ball. So uh, that definitely plays a factor into it. Uh, Zayka on the Wilbur Sports Chat says, Amaral's becoming a pretty good route runner. That might be the answer I'm looking for. What, what do you think it is? How does he stay open like this, dude? The dude's I mean, open like 7-Eleven. I think pretty good maybe selling him short because in order to get this open all the time, That's right. especially when you are the number one wide receiver, which Amonra St. Brown is, I think he is an elite route runner. And you know who else knows how great of a route runner he is? Ben Johnson. Yeah. And Ben Johnson finds ways to scheme Amon Ross St. Brown open. I mean, we saw the Bills game. Every single time that the Lions needed a big play on third downs, whenever, it was Jared Goff to Amon Ross St. Brown. It, it almost always connected. It seems like it always connected. So in order to get that open that that often, I believe that you'd have to say that Amon Ross St. Brown is one of the top route runners in the NFL. We all know that Ben Johnson is one of the most, in my opinion, brilliant offensive minds in the NFL. So I just think it's a combination of the two. I do think so. And I think, uh, <laughs> I, I think that, what? you know, Amon Ra is, is all about obviously perfecting his physique. Sure. Because we know his dad, John Brown, they're, they're in there working out. If you want to make sure 
that you're on that same caliber, all you got to do is go to Planet Fitness because they're the official studio sponsor of Woodward Sports Network. And Planet Fitness is the home of the judgment-free zone where you can work out in a non-intimidating, judgment-free atmosphere. The gym that has always been known for being clean is now cleaner than ever. They have tons of equipment, a full-body workout in just 30 minutes of the 30-minute circuit. And all memberships include fitness training. You can get all of that for just $10 a month. Join in club or online at planetfitness.com. It's Planet Fitness where your fitness is essential. Sports love wearing clothes, then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Beverly Hills golf, Woodward golf, and of course, our own logoed out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends, impress your boss, impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. at work and at home. We're there with smarter security solutions, featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm, we protect Michigan. Make sure you download the Woodward Sports app in the App Store and the Google Play Store today. Take Woodward Sports with you wherever you go and listen live on your phone or mobile device. At Alta, up time matters. Alta equipment has everything you need. Bug projects <laughs> coming up. Alta rent has you covered. Just call them, 844-GO-TO-ALTA. That's 844-GO-TO-ALTA. Uptime matters. Today. <laughs> what up, though? Welcome back to the Woodward Happy Whites. Live on the Woodward Happy Whites. I'm going to switch your style. Hey, boys, Joe, my man, Spin More Racks. We got Young Chris and T-Man. <laughs> JB Spoon, the one, two. We're playing on Sam and the Mad Show. We have Adam Morrison chilling in the corner laughing. That's a good, you got a good laugh, Adam. Dude, Spencer, that was good. Thank you. Go, dude. Thank you. All right, you guys, know, you guys know what time it is. It's a special Ooh, time of the day. It is Friday. And because it is Friday, we had to skip it last week, but the Pick'em is back. And, you know, the fate of this Pick'em is the Wiener suit. Whoever loses is in the Wiener suit. And we've been doing a lock for the past couple couple weeks, and it's been working, but we're spicing it up a little bit. Now, if your lock is wrong... It's minus a point. So it's plus two if it's right, but minus one if it's wrong. JB, Ooh. drop me a beat. Let's get this started. First things first, easy. It's easy, bro. Jets at Vikings. Who do you got? Jets at Vikings. Ooh, man. It's a good game. There's a lot of good that games this week. Um, it's going to be a close one. Detroit Lions got to make playoffs. Vikings got to lose some game. I'll just take the completely homer pick and take the Jets. All, All right. right. JB, Jets at Vikings. Give me the Vikings. I'm not too convinced on this Mike White QB. So, yeah, give me the Vikings on this one. Sam Flannel? I got to go Vikings on this one. I mean, I, the, Mike White for the Jets is kind of due for a, for a bad game. And I kind of think that Justin Jefferson might expose Sauce a little bit. Woo! Give, give, give me Vikings. I like that. Oh, change my Vikings. Change my Vikings. No. So, <laughs> Chris. Yes. Jets have Vikings. That's bullshit. Where are they? <laughs> <laughs> Where are they playing? They're playing in Minnesota. Minnesota at the Superdome. I'll take Vikings in a lock. Okay, Vikings Ooh, in a lock. lock. Woo, that's, that's spicy. Okay. That is Bonk spicy. Lock already. That is spicy. I punched a homeless man once. <laughs> I punched a homeless man and I bet on the Vikings. All right. Um, Which was I worse? I want to go Jets here. I'm not going to lie. I kind of want to jump on that train with you. I think the Vikings will win, but I'm going Jets. I I want to lose. I, I want to wear the the Wiener shoot. I want to join the rest of you nerds, you losers. I'm gonna go Vikings. I agree with Sam. I think Justin Jefferson exposes sauce. Next up, easy Steelers at Falcons. Who do you got? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I'm telling you, there's a lot of good games. Steelers have like looked better as of late. Kenny Pickett has looked pretty good as of late, but it's in Atlanta. And he's still a rookie quarterback. ATL. Yeah, give me Falcons. Louisville. And they lost to the Colts. 
I'm gonna get this money, Lewis Willville. JB. I don't actually can make a one. Falcons. Steelers at Falcons. Who do you got? Uh, as Easy was saying, Steelers have looked a little bit better, so I think I'm leaning the Steelers on this one. All right. Sam Flannel? I'm going to go with the Falcons. There's not a ton of logic here. I just need the Atlanta Falcons to win so they can win the NFC South. I like it. And, I like and, it. and get Tom Brady. You hate Tom Brady. Yeah, yeah, because Tom Brady somehow is going to have the Brady luck and have a losing record and still win the division. But I can't with the Falcons. Don't let that happen. Beat the Steelers. That's fair. Chris? <sighs> I could not name three players in this game, but I am going to go, based off my expert opinion and the deep dive and hitting the numbers, I'm going with the Steelers. I think they're the better team. All right. I am going to go with the Falcons. I think the Steelers are banged up. Najee might not play. Their backup running back might not play. Uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for them to pull it out. They almost lost the Colts with Jeff Saturday and crippled Matt Ryan. So I'm going to go with Atlanta with the dub. Next up. Commanders at Giants. Who do you got? Giant. Ooh, Commanders been on Commanders a roll. Commanders have been on a heater. They have been on a roll. Give me Giants. JB. Ooh. I, Commanders Giants at Giants. Banged up though. I'm going with Ryan on this one. You got plus points for a home team. Give me the New York Giants on this one. We don't play the points, so JB just said that for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen the last show, but yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Sam. I got, the, Giants. I got the commanders in this one. I think the Giants, as much as I respect guys like Brian Dayball and um, Saquon Barkley, I think they were as fraudulent of a 7-2 and two team as I've ever seen. The commanders have a better roster. They will win at New York. Chris. Oof. Sounds like the commanders have a better roster. <laughs> no, I'll go, with the, I'll go with the Giants. They're at home. I think, I think they've been sliding, and I think this is a game to, to right the ship. I'm also going to go with the Giants. I think... Uh, Taylor Heineke effect, that hot streak, it's got to end eventually. They're going on the road in a hostile environment. Giants coming off a loss. I think they're going to bounce back. Next one, I'm stealing it right now. I'm going Packers with my lock hey. over the Bears. Not fair. Oh, that's BS. Easy. <laughs> that is, that's, you can't do that. <laughs> I'm doing, I just, I just did. That's my lock. Packers, Bears. Packers. Okay. You, you just sniped the lock. I did. That's JB. That's full stop. <laughs> JB, Packers, Bears. What do you got? It's Packers. Come on, man. <laughs> That's bullshit. Aaron Rodgers owns Chicago. Let's, let's be real. Sam, Packers, Bears. Packers. Aaron Rodgers plays an MVP Aaron Rodgers style game. Quite as kept. The Bears defense has been awful since they got rid of Robert bad, Quinn bad, and Roquan bad. Smith. Packers roll. And Chris is going with the Bears. So no. <laughs> Packers, Bears. What do you got? No, I changed my mind. <laughs> Give me the Packers. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is taking the Packers. Next up. Uh, Dolphins at 49ers. Probably the best game of the week. This is going to be a great game. Who you got? This is going to be a really good game. Um, give me 49ers. They control it. The, the Kyle Shannon also like owns his. He does. What do you call him? People own the tree. Him. Tree. Tree. He owns the tree. He, like uh, Sean McVay only won one game against him. Give me yeah. 49ers. And they control the face of the game too. JB. Uh, 49ers are a little bit banged up. I'm leaning towards the Dolphins on this one. And make this one my lock. Wow. wow. Miami Damn, with the wow. lock. Like a good one. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't take that. I, would've... I forgot about lock. If I was taking Green it's Bay. It's been two weeks. If I was taking Green Bay, I was going to take San Francisco with my lock. Yeah. I got to go, go 49ers. I think they're the arguably the most talented roster in the NFL. I think Nick Bosa will give two a tag of Iloa some heat and the Dolphins cannot win at San Francisco or BDE will be absolute hell for me. Yeah, so g- give me San Francisco. That'll be very yeah. tough. Chris, who you got? The 49ers are going to be making two a throw of gang signs again. I got the 49ers. Jesus. Oh. Too soon. What did you say? He said the 49ers are going to be making two a throw of gang That's signs. That's whoa, dude. I'm, going, wow. I'm also going with the 49ers. I just... My love affair with Fred Warner just keeps extending. The guy is, I think he's one of the best defensive players in the NFL. Next up, Jags at Lions. Who do you got? Lions, Malak. Boom. All right. JB? Lions. I knew Easy was going to take that. I think it's the last one, right? No, there's one more. Damn. JB? Lions. Lions? Oh, yeah. Sam? Lions will win this one because they have to. Give me the Lions. Okay. Sus? Uh, Chris? (laughs) Sorry. Give me the Lions. I think they're going to actually blow them out. I like it. I Honestly, like it. bro, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm also really going would. Lions. I think, yeah, this is the healthiest they've been. 
They're going to play a lot. It's going to be number fun. is less. And Monday Night Football Saints at Buccaneers. Who do you got? Ooh. Tom Brady has never been able to beat the Saints in the yeah, regular, regular season. season. Yeah. Give me Saints. JB. Give me the box. Oh. Sam? <laughs> oh, boy. This is going to be bad because I haven't chosen a lock yet. So I'm going to go with the Saints in yeah. a lock. Well, Let's I mean, go. you could also choose retroactively Atlanta or Washington if you'd rather choose one of them. Um, Give me give me Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, because because like I'm, I'm confident in the Saint in the Saints. I think they the defense gives Tom Brady fits in the regular season. And this isn't the same. This isn't the same Bucks offense as it was last year. Give me the Saints. Okay. Chris? I got to go with TB12. I got to. I'm riding with him. I'm going to go with New Orleans. I just, I really think it is, it is a curse that Tom Brady can't beat the Saints in the regular season. And that is it. That is our pick em. So, So, for the locks, Chris has Minnesota over the Jets as his lock. Sam has the Atlanta Falcons over the Pittsburgh Steelers as his lock. I have Green Bay over Chicago. JB has Miami over San Francisco. JB, I think you're wearing the suit. I'm sorry. It might end up being me. Easy has Detroit over the Jaguars. Those are our locks for the week. May the odds be in your favor. May the odds be in your favor. May y'all have a strike true. You guys do a... Uh problem michigan versus purdue you want yeah you want to prop them up we can prop them up i didn't look up anywhere i could do it right now no I'll, yeah i'll do it right now you okay. want, let's do let's do an early break and then we'll we'll come back and do the prop bet and sounds good do them tell both. us about bedrock we tell you about bedrock i'll tell i'll, I'll, I'll tell, tell you about, about bedrock it. <laughs> <laughs> all right downtown YMCMB. detroit is all decked out this holiday season with the return of the cadillac lodge and monroe street midway the midway has a giant slide they got winter bumper cars and an indoor arcade Plus, you got drinks before or after the game. Shop, eat, and play downtown all but along with DeckedOutDetroit.com. It's back. Year three of Woodward Sports Stuff A Studio is here. The past two years, we've collected new unwrapped toys and stuffed our studio so we could hardly fit in it. This year, we're doing it even bigger. Join Woodward Sports and our whole family, December 19th to the 23rd, as we stuff our studio. While you're out shopping or just sitting on your couch ordering presents, make sure you grab one extra and drop it off at our studio, 15 Mile in Woodward in Birmingham. <laughs> we'll be collecting toys around the clock to make sure every child in Mott's Children's Hospital feels the warmth of the holiday season. It's the time of year to do for others. Help us stuff our studio. Special thanks to all the wonderful elves at Meyer and Guardian Alarm for keeping the toys safe. Stuff a Studio 2022 with Woodward Sports. For a limited time only, all new burgers and loaded fries at Big Boy. It's not a Slim Jim, it's the Big Jim. The chili cheese is such a tease. Guess what else is new? The bacon blue. How about upgrading those fries? Chili cheese fries, baked potato fries, nacho fries. What will it be? Satisfy those taste buds at Big Boy. My name is Lee. I've lost 35 pounds on the Custom Health Center program. So the three biggest benefits that I've gotten from this uh, this program has been, I'm not snoring anymore, I have a lot of energy, uh, it's great, and oh by the way, look at this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm... Call us at 844-789-THIN or visit customhealthcenters.com for a free consultation and get started for as little as $5 a day. You have an opinion? Make sure it's seen and heard. Corner, jumper, out. Tweet us, hop on the YouTube chat, slide in the DMS at Woodward Sports on all social media. Uh, what up, though? Welcome back to Woodward Everywhere. It's live on WoodwardSports.com. I'm your boy, Easy. It's my man, Steve Mo Rack. What up, though? Some breaking news. We we'll probably lead this into a little bit of a UFC conversation because there's Kevin Holland versus Stephen Thompson this weekend. Yeah, but. it's yeah, Wonder Boy back out there. But uh, per Ariel Helwani, who is the GOAT of UFC, Media and yeah, no, Woodward Heavyweight Vet no and Wood, Wood, Woodward Heavyweight Vet, you know, front of the show, episode front of the show. one, yeah, no, no big deal. deal. Episode one, no we had Ariel on, no big deal. Flex, but 
Per Ariel Helwani on Instagram, UFC's chief business officer, Hunter Campbell, has just informed all fighters that effective immediately, fighters who choose to continue to be coached by James Krause or who continue to train in his gym will not be permitted to participate in UFC events. This will remain pending Nevada's investigation into the suspicious, suspicious Derek Minor fight on 11-5. As of now, Krause's license has been suspended in Nevada. The UFC has also released minor. This comes after Ontario and Alberta have banned UFC betting and New Jersey stopped taking bets on any UFC fights associated with Krause. Yes, James Krause, I don't know if you guys knew this, he was doing, he started a business, which is completely illegal, and uh, he'd have you sign for like an offshore like betting account. Yeah. And then he was like guaranteeing you returns if you gave him like your login and he'd make the, the bets for you. That's essentially what was going down. Um, one of his fighters, like the odds like grossly changed and then they lost the fight. And James Krause, I mean, it's definitely a sketchy situation. My boy Adam's been wanting me to talk about this in the show for a minute. Yeah. But like, I mean, we obviously talk UFC, but I don't know how big of a base UFC fans we have. You know Not really big, but I, th I like talking about it. And this yeah. is Im hugely impactful to the sport. Yeah. I, I mean, he has a lot of guys that train over him. He's gyms in Missouri. Um, I'm trying to think of a couple of guys that I know actually aren't in the UFC no, any longer, but um, the guy has a podcast with Kendra Lust, the Cuban Missile Crisis. He's, yeah. he's, he's one of there. It's not, I mean, I'm sure guys are going to stick with James Krause because they're, they're close and they'll be friends with them, but at the end of the day, I mean, if they want to make money or... They want to participate in UFC, yeah. they can't. Yeah. So Dana's kind of dropping the hammer. Oh, for sure. I mean, he, what he was doing was absolutely illegal and sketchy. Yeah, hell, it's, it's, it's kind of scummy. 100%. Kind of scummy. And it's like fixing fights almost. I mean, yes. not really, but you're swaying odds. Yeah. And so you, you can't do stuff like that. It's, it is. It is. That's bad. I don't even know why he would do that in the first place. Nothing about that seems legal. Like, I don't even know like There's, why yeah. you would have thought that was a Julius good idea. Said, Give me 10 bucks. I'll make it happen. I promise you'll get your money. Don't worry yeah. where it's going. What what's what's what we're doing with it. Don't worry. You're gonna get your money. Now that's the weird part for sure. For it's it's shyster activity. Speaking of bets, Detroit Lions, Jaguars. This is actually one of my new favorite segments. I don't know how it didn't make its way into the prep sheet today, but prop it up. Prop it up. Should we do music for this one? Come Hell on, yeah. prop it up. Yeah, you know we prop Tell it me up. JB. Come on, prop it up. All right. Yeah, you know we prop it up. Passing yards, Trevor Lawrence, over under 247 and a half. Over. Ooh, dude, what is wrong with me? I don't know. My brain didn't work yesterday. Your voice doesn't work yeah. today. Over. Final Sam. Over. I got to go over. Trevor Lawrence is a damn good quarterback. You guys will be happy to hear this. Trevor Lawrence is a better quarterback than Jared Goff right now. Oh, Facts. for sure. Yeah. 100%. No, without a doubt. It's, especially now, he's looking phenomenal. Yeah, he's got what? Where is it? J JB 16 Smith. touchdowns, 6 interceptions yep. on the year. Dude's yeah. playing well. the baller. Uh, give me an over. Yeah. He's coming. He's becoming a better quarterback as the years go on and games go on. So, yeah. Give me an over. If you guys want to bet this, just give me your money. You know, and I'll make the bets for you. <laughs> I probably should oh, get your money back. Chris, you want to Before we get into yeah, it sure. too what? far, let's nominate the... Oh, yeah, we got to do champ. that. Yeah, so go with... Uh, Dabber. Dabber. Dabber, Steve Lehman. I, King, and Joey I, Tietis. King, and Joey. Yeah, I bet. Those would be our four nominations. All right, so let me get for that Chant up. For Champ for today. Chant Champ today. Let me get you know, that up. Steve Lehman's right. putting some, some bangers out there. He's going to make it. Rushing yards, DeAndre Swift, 19. Over, under. 19? Yeah, over. 19 and a half. Over. James Cooks that, was 16 and a half yesterday. Yeah, DeAndre Swift, 19. You know, I'm taking this 19? right now. I hammer James, James Cooks over. I mean, if he, just be real about it. He is playing limited fashion. Yeah, but I mean, that's like one. He breaks one. Or he just yeah, gets 19 two and good and a half on FanDuel right now. Final Sam, you're the, you're the residential DeAndre Swift hater. Well, I'm, I'm Spain might be with you on that one, actually. <laughs> I'm smashing the under on that one. In his last five games, he's averaging 12 rushing yards a game. I need to see it first. DeAndre Swift, under. Yeah, he had 19 against Buffalo, 20 against New York, 6 against Chicago. 10, 6, 31. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, it's worth taking... I'm taking the over. Just because it's such a low amount, uh, and he's like a, such an explosive player. They essentially had a bye week last week with the whole Thursday night game. I, mean, I keep calling it Thursday night. Thursday game. Yeah. So, uh, you know what? I'm going to do that right now. I'm taking the over as we speak. Um. All right. Sorry, I'm doing my own personal best. Jamal Williams, 56 and a half yards. Over. Over. Jamal Williams is going to tote the rock a lot. Although I do, you know, I like uh, Jacksonville's <laughs> defense. 
I think Jamal Williams will get over 50 and a half or 55 and a half. JB Smooth? Over from both Swift and Jamal Williams. Those, those numbers look too low. That's fair. Flat out Sam. I'm going to give over for Jamal Williams. I don't think he'll go that much over, but Deion, I mean, Jamal Williams is just such a hammer. He's a walking, he could get 17 and 62 in his sleep with his Stop. offensive line over. I got to look up his numbers now. All right. My clock on my new the laptop ever since getting fixed is actually delayed. I didn't realize. 6.57. Yeah, that's wild. I get that fixed. But let's talk about Michigan a little bit. They play Purdue. I was going to get in before the show ends. I was, should we even do it? No. Okay. Michigan's going to win. It's Purdue. <laughs> Final Sam. I mean, the Purdue passing attack gives me a little bit of cause for pause, but if Michigan doesn't just completely like overlook this game and crap the bed, it's gonna be forty-two to twenty-four. Right. That, that's that. That's that's probably the worst it could possibly be for Michigan. Yeah. Honestly, forty-two to twenty-four. Michigan's gonna. Don Edwards is gonna do what he does. JJ is gonna probably not even have to throw the ball. It's, it's gonna be a, a regular Michigan route we've seen all year. Purdue's not a good football team. Christian Kirk over under 65 yards. Over under 65 yards. Under. Sam. Under. He's getting clamped. Seatbelt gang. I will give. I charge yes. I'll give the slide over. I, we have Trevor Lawrence hitting his over. His favorite target is Christian Kirk. Give me the, like, maybe 72 or something like that. DJ Chark revenge game, man. 35 and a half for him. Over under. Ooh. Uh, under. Under, man. I haven't seen it all year. I think Amon Ra obviously eats a lion's share. I think Josh Jacobs will be the second option, or Josh Reynolds will be the second option. So I'm going to go under. JB? Uh, what was the number one more time? 35 and a half for DJ Chark. 35 and a half. I'm actually about to take the over. I think I might take the over on that one. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, game. it's a revenge game. Like All he needs is just one deep ball from Jared Goff and then he's in the house. That's asking a lot. Yeah, it is. is. That's but, fair. I mean, we asked a lot from Jared Goff as of lately. So. He's been banged up, though. I mean, when, when healthy, oh, man, he did get shot at Washington. But uh, eight targets, four receptions in the very first game against Philadelphia for 52 yards. Um, got shut out against Washington. In Minnesota, he had three catches for 46. And then in Buffalo last week, he had this, you know, two catches, 16 yards, and a touchdown. All right, one more. Hurry. One more? Yeah. On my phone, I got to unlock it. And that will do it for today. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. <laughs> I don't, we want to do a receiving one. Let's see. Hold on, hold on. Marvin Jones, a revenge game for him, too. 30, 31 and a half. Over. I'm going to go over, too. Over. 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 He's like a big play guy. I love he Marvin Jones. Warm. I love yeah. Marvin Jones. Big he, Marvin yeah. Jones guy. But Close, that'll do it. Closer and it looks today. Like closer today. I King but. Horse wins again, man. You guys are giving this guy too much credit. He was slacking today. Yeah. No, nah, he was he was fire. I but thought Dabber, Dabber, Dabber really should have took it, it today. I King. I mean, it's hard it's hard to take the king off his throne. But that'll do it for us today. We appreciate you all tapping in. Make sure you like and share the stream. Tell your friends about us. You know where we are. We're on WilbertSports.com. We're five to seven Monday through Friday. For the man to my left, the one, the only speak easy. Young Chris holding it down on the ones and twos. JB Smooth. <laughs> On the ones Making us sound as great. Well. Sam Flannel in the mass chair and our guy Adam bringing in the za, chilling with us. Appreciate that. We appreciate all of you too. That'll Taking do it for us today. We'll see you guys on Monday. Have a great weekend and go Lions. Peace.